What's going on, planet Earth? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now I'm going to proceed oh. to make fun of every city, state, and country watching us tonight. And then I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make fun of all four of my friends. One's big, one's old, one's a playwright, and one's stupid. <laughs> That's how we do it when it's Glass Cannon Live. But this isn't Glass Cannon Live. This is a, a, a strange Aeons marathon. And we are not marathon gamers. <laughs> We're not marathon men. We can't do much of anything for hours on end. Uh, so we got to take We're it easy. We're not endurance athletes. That's, that's no. not our thing. <laughs> Maybe uh, Peloton Jones up here is. But and Peloton uh, Jones does like 40 minutes and then collapses <laughs> in the backyard. He, both, he doesn't. <laughs> both of the Peloton Joneses recently joined the Century Club. Oh. What? Oh. Well, excuse me. What, well, what sex da. act does that involve? I don't understand. <laughs> Well, there's an attachment that hooks up to the levers of the bicycle. Oh, no. And it so, you said too much. Oh, no. I, have one no, word no, I thought that kid. was one of the rules of the Century Club is you can't talk about. It. No, the rule is things. if anyone asks you, overshare. Overshare. Yeah. Ah, okay. I've got My one mistake. word for you, Skid. Pedals. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to ask, and I already regret asking, what is the Century Club? You've done 100 oh. rides. Yeah. Oh, God. And you get a free t-shirt. I knew, I knew I'd regret asking. You know what 100 rides equals, Troy? 15 minutes of a CrossFit workout. <laughs> you know how many KCALs that is over time? <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, what am I? I'm five days away from getting 60 days in a row. Oh, I just got that. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm motivated by Matthew. My goal is just to crush his scores on every ride that we take together. And I've been doing pretty well so far. Yeah, but yeah. A lot of it is my enormous frame compared to your his. Legs are twice the length of mine. Must be nice to not have uh, bursitis and horrible liver damage and not be able to work out for six weeks straight. <laughs> you know, Must be nice to join the Century Club and not piss brown 14 times a day. Thanks for asking. Enjoy your Century Club, Richie. Thanks for asking, Troy. It's really great being healthy and happy at all times. Um, it's something that both my characters on this show and I like to prioritize above all things. Myself. That's it's tough. nice that Troy can be happy for you. Being a, with him in the state that he's in, that he can still be happy that you guys are healthy and well. It's really that's an all I can really ask for. Yeah. Um, it was this week though that I realized that we need a contingency plan for what if if one of us dies. I was like, we have we really have no plan. I'm surprised uh, you haven't thought about that a lot. Well, Joe mentions every once in a while, and I'm like, ah, Skid won't mind what we do with this stuff. <laughs> I bring it up like every I don't know every few months like during our meeting I'm like we really have to talk about this it's really important he's like hey, I got a lot going on <laughs> I don't want to think about that and then all of a sudden I'm on death's door and I'm like maybe maybe I'll send Joe a text uh, can't lift can't lift the phone up I'll do it later my impression uh, here is that you thought about you think about death a lot though <laughs> His well, own I do death, fix though, it. not um, ours. Yeah, no, I don't think about yours. Um, but we need to, uh, we, we do need a plan in place, uh, especially with over a thousand people watching right now. What? I mean, my what? goodness. What? Not 2,000, mind you, no. but over a thousand. Just solid start, solid start. Maybe just they're just waiting. Up. They know it's going to be 45 minutes of this before we ever get into the actual uh, <laughs> dice rolling of the game. So maybe people know us by now and they're like, you know what? I'll tune in at 7.45. I guarantee they won't even roll, have rolled a diplomacy check by then. Uh, but this is exciting. We've been talking about this for a long time. Like what we want to do, you know, for a long time we were holding out thinking like, you know what? Maybe, maybe Atlanta will happen. Or maybe, maybe, maybe those Milwaukee and Chicago shows that got postponed will happen. I think about a month and a half ago, we realized that that wasn't going to happen. And now New York, no way it's going to happen. Philly, no way it's going to happen. We've started booking glass cannon lives for 2021 already. I mean, all the way through the year. Uh, and it's, we're still fingers crossed on those, but Two reasons we wanted, well, three reasons we really wanted to do this. There are a lot of reasons why we wanted to do this. One, we miss <laughs> playing this game. We miss these characters. We miss this story. Don't you agree? Don't you guys miss playing, uh, you know, Mrs. O'Lady and Aldo and uh, Atticus and Halster? They're some of my favorite characters of yours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I was yeah. bummed. I was thinking about today. I was like, you know, Strange Aeons has gotten on a uh, Jade Regent pace. Uh, it's, it's just not acceptable. 
That's sad. Now when you put it that way, that's sad. Isn't that sad? You know, we've been playing a lot of like Lovecraftian type games with Delta Green. I played a little Cthulhu on our, our uh, friend's stream, Stream of Blood. And uh, we want to, uh, to kind of dive back into that. And what better way to do it than have Pathfinder and Lovecraft go hand in hand and play Strange Aeon. So really, one thing is we wanted to play again. Two, we wanted to progress the story just from a, a simple like need to progress the story. I mean, we would have probably finished book one sometime this summer and then started book two. And I don't want to like wait until 2021 to get back to where we were uh, at the end of the Boston show. Yeah, and so in in classic glass cannon fashion, we can't just do like, well, why don't we play one session? We're like, we're gonna marathon all the way through the book, <laughs> and then next week we'll do all the book two. We can't do anything halfway. Um, and then third, it's really a, a weekend long celebration of all things glass cannon. All of our shows have gone on hiatus. We've created some new shows. There's a lot of uh, topsy turvy stuff going around, and we want to give everybody updates on what's happening, and also release a bunch of exciting new Patreon goals uh, to help sort of uh, recoup the the losses from this tour. Um, so we're going to be doing that all weekend long. Exciting announcements, extrapolations on said announcements all weekend while we also play some strange aeon so if you're here just for gaming well you, you're in the wrong place because we're gonna do a little gaming we're gonna do a little shaman and we're gonna maybe do a little two-step <laughs> i don't Very know Ill. which of those options scares me the most <laughs> i bet you do a mean two-step matthew no <laughs> if, you, if you invited me to your no. wedding i would have shown you we oh, weren't listen. First of Bazinga. all, first of all, we started recording this show. We released episode one on June sixteenth, twenty fifteen. I got married later that year in December, December twelfth, I think, twenty fifteen. <laughs> we were not close friends, Matthew. But I'll tell you what: had those invitations gone out before we became the 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 brothers that we are now, and this goes to you, Grant. I'm not forgetting about you there's a good chance you would have made the second cut of names. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, <laughs> Matthew, you, you also shouldn't complain too much because Troy's invitations clearly said no children allowed. You didn't meet the minimum did. high requirement. Unless uh, you were in the wedding party. Uh, you would have made a cute little ring bearer, though. Yeah. He has a beard, though. That's, That's true. A, he clearly has a beard. That just helps him buy cigarettes from the bodega <laughs> around the block from his house. That's all that is. Lucy's. He buys Lucy's. Well, there you go. You don't think he had that exact beard at 11 years old? He definitely did. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Let's talk about these costumes here. Uh, Joe, you made a big deal about... Uh, doing cosplay tonight and here you are with your with your mascara and your eyeliner and your top hat and your fancy gloves <laughs> and you've inspired skid to go full-on mad scientist as well i know it's amazing it's amazing i'm so excited we have never done this before to my recollection we've never cosplayed before do you like uh, it looks like you got some rouge on there too yeah i got rouge on i got like paler to make my face look paler uh, eh, could you imagine? I, could, I needed to get paler, and then uh, I don't understand I, I think, the concept. Yeah, Matthew needs some. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just need lights like Matthews, and I'll look a lot better. Uh, Matthew, you and, look like the Joker uh, in the Michael Keaton Batman, where he like needed to put uh, skin color on <laughs> over his, <laughs> his <laughs> <like God>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, anyway, I'm really excited about it. I just really, I, this has been something that I've always been into about Atticus is the, is you know, the Flair. fact that he's an illusionist. Never played yeah. an illusionist before. And so I was like, I'm going to get all into it. I got to say. And, it, uh, I'm missing a few props, which sucks, but I'll try to find him throughout the night. If you take Maybe the hat the off, you look like a uh, background drummer for Green Day. Kind of like the, <laughs> the, the boardwalk of lonely dreams type of era. They start wearing eyeshadow. Yeah, the boulevard of broken dreams. Grant, pardon isn't it? me. I was thinking uh, you actually look like the narrator character from Waiting for Guffman, like the old farmer guy yeah. with the makeup. He does yeah. have a lot of rouge on. Yeah, <laughs> Skid, you're a big wig guy. I remember the uh, the, the GCP 100 uh, celebration. You went full on blonde wig. Love I love did. a good wig. I can't remember the thinking behind the blonde wig, but uh, I I know I have a reason for this one. So, uh, Grant Matthew, what are your excuses? Where are your costumes? Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, that's cute. There he the is. cowardly Halster, always oh, running away from battle. Uh, this is actually a promotional Five Nights from Freddy's available on iOS, the hottest game of 2009. 
Just plug uh, in other games and not yeah, giving us money? <laughs> yeah, not giving us any money. But uh, yeah, I just uh, it had to be a big reveal. But I can't wear these the whole time. I don't know how Joe and Skid could wear that the entire time. I'm I excited do, to wear this the whole time. I'm I can't thrilled. Wait. My head is so just simply sweat. too large for these glasses, so I have to take them out before I pass out. I'm cosplaying um, as someone who has a Patreon subscription to the Glass Cannon Network. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I really did a little work on that. Maybe the ghost of someone who has a Patreon subscription. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're haunting this stream with uh, your whiteness. Uh, well, I'm fired up. I, uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I don't have any insults to hurl tonight because... Just getting to hang out is 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 fun, and hanging out with the Nash. This is we're trying to have the biggest gathering all weekend long of the Nash to marathon through the end of this book. And I'll tell you right now, I think we're going to pull it off. I think we're actually going to get through the entire uh, end of the book, uh, which is pretty exciting um, because you know we don't get to really game like that anymore. Before we had a podcast, we would have days where it's like the wives and girlfriends were like not around. We're like, all right, let's play Jade Regent for uh, eight hours straight, and then again tomorrow. Like we don't do that anymore. So uh, it'd be fun just to play and not have to perform. But you know, you can't, you can't have it both ways. Yeah, but I, I don't forget it, man. Just play. Don't perform. Just play. I and can't I think help. It, because look, that's the thing. And uh, I was talking to our buddy Adam at Or the Amber Die about this because those guys are all about marathoning. Yeah, that's and he's jam. like, well, what are you guys going to do about like, you know, uh, splitting up gold, a treasure, uh, you know, cu- uh, curing with a wand. Uh, <laughs> we you know, don't all have the a plan that we, for like, that in our non-marathon. Right, all the things <laughs> that we cut out of an episode. And I'm like, we have no plan. Like, we're just going to play the game. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there might be points where we have to do that kind of stuff especially if you're moving through this much of the book, but I'm excited to do it. And I'm, I think I'm most excited at the prospect. And this is why order the Amber die loves marathon gaming so much is like to keep the story consistent. It's like, you don't forget as much to do a whole lot right through the end of the book. I think it's going to give a a certain level of, uh, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for. It just a, um, uh, I can't think of the word. Catharsis. (laughs) <laughs> a legitimacy a legitimacy ah. to our understanding of the story and the module we're not going to forget those powers we got or those items that somebody gave, an NPC gave us or that, like we usually do you know, yeah. on our yeah. shows because time passes between these recordings right and we're usually like 90 beers in the bag by the end of the show and <laughs> like Matt did you get all that treasure and he's like who um, Have I, you've been asking me to keep records of the treasure all along weren't you the treasure keeper <laughs> it was you all along uh, yeah well I mean I've, I've got a recap I'm going to do tonight which is a full recap of the story from our first show in LA until now it's it's a long recap but I think it's necessary not only for uh, for the audience but for you guys because this show is unlike any of our other shows um, in terms of how we play it. We play once a month in a different city and it's a party. This is going to be much more a game. It's still going to be a party, but I can't drink, so it's not going to be as much fun. Um, however, I think uh, I think we're going to have a hell of a good time with it and survival rate for the weekend I think is pretty low, which is always exciting. Uh, I'm, saying, I, I'm saying I'm guaranteeing a PC death by the end of Sunday. You can hear it here first, guaranteeing PC death. Are you including your own mortality in those odds, Troy? Because things have been looking bleak for you lately. I am an NPC, but uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going to make any claims on possible NPC deaths. Uh, before we get into that, though, we said we we're going to do some announcements. So I want to jump in to some announcements. Talk yes! about that stuff. Get get the fires stoked for this marathon and then start playing some fucking strange aeons. We said we're going to talk about what shows are coming, what's going on with our catalog of shows. Obviously, since COVID hit, we made the very difficult decision. Now, obviously, the smart decision to put our main shows on hold and start new shows that we could record and stream from home. Skid running Rise of the Rune Lords, our Legacy of the Ancients podcast, which drops every Friday. Uh, man, if you missed this tonight, this today's episode, you missed a hum dinger. Uh, obviously, New Game Who Dis, the hot podcast of the summer uh, that only came about because Skid had friggin' COVID and we needed to cover for two weeks. And we were like, ah, let's let's try this. And now it's become uh, a major part of our future plans. Look and then, of course, uh, hair. Look what it is. Skid used to have a beautiful quaff. 
Um, and then, of course, side quest, side sesh, which uh, has been filling the the glass cannon feed uh, ever since we put on or we put that show on hiatus. Let's talk about the glass cannon podcast because it is coming back in November. We are going to start getting it back in the studio and recording Glass Cannon in person next month. Um, we're going to be doing it as safely as possible. I as far as we can tell, it's going to be the only show uh, that we uh, record in person together um, to keep things as safe as possible because our other shows, the casts are too large and we want to be safe, especially if uh, the pandemic uh, has a huge second wave in the fall and the winter. Um, so we're going to start recording Recording some glass cannons next month, getting them in the can, and then releasing them on a weekly basis starting in November, which means that Side Quest Side Sesh uh, will uh, be discontinued for the time being uh, once we get back to glass cannon. And then once we get going with glass cannon again, it's... It's the ride to the end. It's book five into book six into the future of Glass Cannon. I'm nervous to get back into it, but I'm excited. What about you guys? Nervous about the story or nervous nervous about COVID? Nervous about the story. <laughs> oh, nervous oh, about the oh. story. Nervous about the game. We're we're in Endgame right now. I mean, we talk about a cliffy. We ended with you guys in, talking to the queen. I know. We almost killed her. I it mean, was... there's 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 a lot going on. So uh, I'm I'm nervous because really the end is in sight and book six is right there and it's happening. We're already talking about what's going to happen after uh, Giant Slayer. So. I don't know. I'm pretty fired up. I'm fired up to get back in the studio. Um, yeah, because we're going to be able to record outside of just our set. So when you're just sitting in our set uh, on camera, it's so tiny and that's all we can do. Whereas with glass can, we can spread out uh, a little bit more since it's yep. not on video and, uh, and do it smart. And yeah. uh, we just want to, we just want to play smart and play smart. get underway and get many, many episodes in the can so that we don't even have to worry about the holidays me, I don't know about a resurgence, you know, I don't know about a resurgence of COVID. I don't know how we, we would handle that. But uh, as we take everything day to day, we take this day to day. And for right now, yeah, we're going to get back in the studio together. I haven't seen any of you guys in over six months. Crazy. I've seen you every it week. Is. Well, you know what I mean. In person. <laughs> person. Yeah, it's weird. I I've haven't gotten like a painful, uncomfortable Grant hug <laughs> in so many months. Grant, I would like to go on record now saying, I, as much as I enjoy your hugs, can we wait until there's a vaccine? <laughs> um, <laughs> sure, but would you be okay with just like a, a thigh press as hard as I can? I've been working on that on the Peloton. I just want to really crush your rib cage with my thighs. I would think that, that, that's social distance enough. Or is that how, how would you even get on him would you just come jumping at him yeah. thighs first <laughs> yeah it's amazing what it does for your vertical leap after you do yeah. a couple months worth of it just lunge at just go at him like gina gershon and and goldeneye yeah exactly <laughs> that, that was my inspiration Tomka johnson am i that oh, obvious Nathan, yeah. uh well yeah i mean it'd be nice to get back in person i mean uh, god that first episode might just be like ah so good to see you guys i want to touch you but i can't <laughs> Uh, so and yeah. Also, how does all this equipment work? I know. I God. Record half of it. It's all I've... dusty. It's probably broken. Um, <laughs> no, it'll be good. It'll be good and exciting, and just get a bunch of apps in the can and 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 hope for the best. Start releasing those sometime in November. What's also going to come back in November? A little show called Androids and Aliens. Yeah! And it's going to take a different form. It's going to be similar to what we do with SideQuest Side Sesh. We're going to start uh, recording it uh, remotely as a uh, as a Twitch stream. And it will be weekly, probably about a 90-minute show every week. Uh, we're planning on releasing it on Fridays. It's an old time slot. Uh, and then the podcast will release the week after. So instead of doing three hours live every week, we'll do an hour and a half every week and just start punching through dead suns. That means Ellie, Sydney, David Wendt, is they're all back and we're going to get uh, we're going to do it the old fashioned way or the new fashioned way uh, <laughs> the over old fashioned uh, way. <laughs> Skype Online. and VMix and uh, we just we, we, we don't want to wait any longer to get back into that story and uh, I think that we've found a way that works for us because trying to get you know 19 people in a in a studio to do that live or even pre-recorded would just be uh, it wouldn't be the safest because uh, people are traveling and everything we feel like we can have a little more control to 
doing that with glass cannon. Uh, but if we wait Sydney, for this, you just can't to be trust over. Sydney with yeah. You know, she's in nightclubs like every night, right? Just <laughs> every night of the week. You don't know what she's caught. We can't. Smash yeah. Mouth concerts. <laughs> <laughs> That's her thing. Might as well be walking on the sun. <laughs> 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 Back and forth from Sydney's Sturgis. Sydney's a smash around. head too. <laughs> Sydney's a smash head too. Is that what they're called? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody once told me, but uh, oh boy, oh, gross. Man. Uh, yeah, so it's coming back. Get excited for November because uh, all your favorites are coming back. If you want to know what's happening with the rest of our shows, you better keep tuning in the rest of the weekend because we don't want to just put everything up front. We want to give you a little taste. Uh, speaking of a little taste, Joe, we talked about Patreon goals, new Patreon goals. Uh, oh, man. Why don't, you, why don't you tell us a little bit about this and then we'll, we'll extrapolate on those later as well. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, this is something that we, you know, we had talked extensively about, you know, part of it was how do we get back some of the lost revenue from the live tour? And I think a lot of it was like, we got to incentivize people on Patreon to, uh, to be excited about hitting those milestones. And we've done a lot of milestones that are, you know, 25,000 apart, 10,000 apart. Occasionally we'd throw a fiver in there, a little di a little nickel. But now uh, we have put together what we think is a feasible system of goals, at least to start us off, that are going to uh, give us very quick results of things that we can hit right away if you guys are able to help us and, uh, and yeah, get us up to speed and get us back to where we need to be to fund our projects for 2021, some of which are on this list and have been on our mind for a while, uh, things that we've been having meetings about and things that we have been uh, I'm just excited about, but it's uh, it's something that we're a little behind on where we want to be. And so we're hoping that the nation can help us get there. And so in order to do that, we laid out a plan of action that takes the form of uh, micro milestones, essentially, uh, on on Patreon and also some big ones that go all the way through to 100,000. So uh, it's is it live on the Patreon now? Uh, it is live on the Patreon now. It's live uh, on the Grant, Patreon now. We have a graphic, graphic Yeah, Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to bring it in with something that's already been reached, the George Lucas wipe. Here we go. Oh, Ooh, I want to see this. Oh, I can't wait to watch. watch. Oh, no. oh All classic. Right. Hey, wow. looking Ooh, good, buddy. That's nice. Looking fancy. Oh, uh, is so that Mos Eisley? <laughs> 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 yeah, so these are, uh, these are what we're looking at for our goals here coming up into the fall to help us get to where we want to be, get back to where we were uh, when we were you know, live touring and had merch at the shows and all that kind of stuff. And this is our little way of, of putting it together. So right out of the gate, we should be able to hit 70 so fast if you guys can help us out. GCN Employee Lounge Movie Night speaks for itself, but all these things we'll go into more detail on later. 71,000 cannon fodder audio returns guess what ladies and gentlemen we now have what we needed for so long a ten dollar premium audio tier so if you are at ten dollars you will get audio of cannon fodder uh, it's going to be awesome more details on that to come mm -hmm. Seventy two thousand one night only D D 5e live there's a wrinkle though Instead of being a garbage game run by a garbage 5e GM <laughs> like we have in-house, hello, we're going to get a real 5e GM to run that game. Very excited about that. Uh, and we're going to do it live in front of all of you. So we'll have somebody who really knows the game run us through and uh, give it a fair shake. 73,000. New Game Who Disc goes live! Live and free for all on Twitch. We're going to be trying new games. And most especially with this tier, we're going to be... Uh, getting guests. We're going to be expanding who we bring into New Game Who Disc because it is the perfect, what do you call it? It's a perfect forum in which to play with new people. You don't have to get them into a long-running campaign. You don't have to wedge their character into something. We can play new games with new people, and this includes personalities within the network as well as uh, reaching out to people in gaming and just expanding the voices we hear on the network. Uh, 74,000. This one has a special place for me. Delta Green graduates. Yeah. It leaves its its formative shell of uh, <laughs> of new game who dis breaks free and becomes its own. Seventy five thousand has been up for a while. Glass Cannon Con, ladies and gentlemen, we've got uh, we've got some things to talk about with Glass Cannon Con, including an approximate time that this is going to happen. Should we hit this goal soon? So uh, hit it. You know, give us a. Try to get us there, and we'll we'll get you more info on that. Then we jump to eighty, and this this is something we've been talking about for a while at GC, GCN D and D Five E podcast. 
Man, there's a lot of details that go on with this one. We'll get cover that uh, later. And then 90,000. It's not what you think. It's not what you think. No, it isn't what you think. <laughs> it's it's going to be it's going to be something a little different and something that I think it, we really need uh, on the network and I'm excited for it. 90,000 the animated pilot. This is something Troy and I have been talking about since we were probably at 10,000. And uh, we've done a lot of research and we've met a lot of people and we have found out that it is enormously expensive to do uh, animation. And uh, we unfortunately have not been where we wanted to be and to, to have the kind of quality animation we wanted. At 90,000, we can make a pilot that we can shop around. We can talk more about that later. Obviously, that's a far away goal. And then and that's 100,000. The and then that's it. That's and it. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's well, 100,000 speaks for itself. But uh, all right, Grant, we're good. Uh, so I just want to give you come guys off if we don't hit it by the end of this weekend. Uh, we <laughs> just want to give you guys we'll talk by Sunday night. If not, it's got. <laughs> oh man! Just want to give you guys a peek, just a peek just at what taste. the plans are. Uh, for more details, you can look at our Patreon page right now and take a look at the explanations behind some of these things. And uh, and as the marathon goes on, we're going to get into more detail. So yeah, very excited about our fall Patreon goals. One last thing before we uh, get into the uh, the real reason why we're here. Uh, we're going to be doing giveaways all weekend of uh, Norse Foundry Dice Sets, Glass Cannon uh, Podcast, Glass Cannon Network, Norse Foundry Dice Sets. Uh, and we're giving them away starting tonight. Uh, Joe, uh, do, you have, do you have the rules for this uh, contest? Yes, I sure do, Troy. Uh, if you want to be entered in to I win a, I do. Uh, a Norse Foundry set of aluminum dice with the old gcp customized right on the d20 and the d6 and right on the 20 just then yeah it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful set of dice uh it's very simple and guess what it's only going to be those of you that are here only those of you that are here are going to be able to participate in this one we need you to take a screenshot or a screen cap of this of the live stream post it on your instagram story and tag us that's it take a, a screenshot post it on your instagram story and tag us so we can see it and, uh, and we are going to collect those throughout the night and announce a winner at 10 p.m. Eastern. 10 p.m. this evening, we will announce a winner. We'll do another reminder around 9, 9, 9.15, uh, depending on when the break and when we get out of break. And uh, you'll have that run up till 10 to get your screenshot in and uh, you will be randomly entered to, to win. Also, I wanted to say that last week b- before the uh, marathon that got postponed, we had a whole series of... Uh, Trivia questions, a trivia question every day. And I just wanted to shout out the winners of that. Uh, each day won a Tom Exposition auto body koozie. Uh, thank you so much for knowing your strange aeons. That goes out to Legs888, uh, AJ Doucette, Akira Anarchy, Converse Lady, and Krugtha. 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 Uh, <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for participating. Uh, you all will get mailed a Tom Exposition koozie. And guess what? There's still trivia happening every day of this marathon. There's trivia live right now. It should be on our story. Go to our Instagram story. There it is. There's a trivia question up there. Should be. Uh, and if it's up there, go ahead and throw in the answer. If you know it, you'll be entered to win. And hopefully we'll be able to announce that tonight at 10 o'clock as well. Very exciting. Uh, yeah. Take a screenshot of this. Throw it up in your story tag at the glass cannon. I lied. There's one more thing we got to talk about before we jump in. Annual memberships, O'Brien. Oh, man. Oh, man. We got too uh, much news. We need a whole new show that's just updates on the niche. I'm fanning myself with my dust train. Like I know. A, this is absolute Southern lunacy. Bell. Those of you that are subscribers to our Patreon and are on there uh, regularly, or at least get the emails regularly, may have seen that a post just went up within the last half hour talking about uh, the ability to do uh, annual memberships. Uh, that is something that we are enacting very soon. And uh, as in tonight, <laughs> uh, it's not quite active that yet, but soon. it will be very soon. And uh, you will be able to donate, not donate, but you will be able to s- subscribe for a year uh, up front in advance at an amazing 5% discount for this weekend only. Patreon has just released this functionality. Uh, we've looked into it. We think it's a great way to help get our cash flows back to where they need to be in 2020. And we think it's a, a great way for you guys to save a few bucks, those of you that are watching the stream right now. So... Uh, if you want a little bit later in the night, check it out and, uh, and see if you can sign up for an annual membership and, uh, get rid of that monthly billing. It's so exhausting. Oh, my card was declined because it was the past the expiration month. 
Forget that. No, no more. Not anymore. You can get set up on a yearly rotation with the glass cannon. And, uh, and you know that we guys are, you know that we are committed to you guys uh, to get you uh, content all year long and for years to come. So, you know, we'll be here. Uh, go ahead and, and help us out and give us a little of that advance money uh, just so we can uh, get back to where we want to be heading into 2021. Is that available right now? They could go do that right now if they wanted to or no? No, they can't do it yet, but they will be able to like within the hour. Oh, all right. Well, t- calm down, everybody. <laughs> calm down. I know you were just <laughs> whipping out your checkbooks, uh, but wait, wait 45 minutes. Uh, all right. We are oddly, I think, on schedule. I think we're, not. we're 10 minutes late. Well, we started 10 minutes late and then we're still 10 minutes late. Yes. We're 10 okay. minutes late, which means it's right on time. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes late is right on time. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to have some fun tonight and it starts right now. Grant, I wish we were on the road together, buddy. And I could yell this in front of a crowd of thousands. <sighs> Take us to the recap. Your mics are live, so feel free to ooh and ah. <laughs> I can't wait. Can't wait. Ooh, oh my god. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh Grant. <laughs> this one was on the cutting room floor from like a, a year ago. I was like, no, Grant, do this instead. Man, this will look oh. great now. What was I thinking? <laughs> just uh, amazing. just phenomenal <laughs> it was That's i'm glad perfect. you put it on the cutting room floor because it feels <laughs> epic to be back with all of y'all tonight back on the old strange aeons yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh it just really it almost feels real uh if we were only like nine soko lime shots in it would really feel like <laughs> the old days uh well i guess for a recap he threw up a cool graphic here it is. This is a recap that goes. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Before you get started, it looks like it is active. It looks wait. like the annual memberships are live. Oh, sorry. They are. Wow. So yeah. So if you want to go and check it out, it should just just post it in the chat. I'll I'll check out the chat right now if it's you know, not no. working. But I'll it wait. should be live. Go do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> go do it right now. Uh, I don't yeah, have enough you... water to last to the first break. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'm gonna go do that. You guys just talk it up. Go get your annual membership five percent off. No big deal. Uh, great time to jump to the $10 tier, by the way, if you're at five. Premium audio, if you like that. Anyways, recap. God, do you remember that first L.A. show? Sitting backstage, Skid giving that interview, all relaxed on the couch. <laughs> Ma- Matthew standing next to that David Bowie poster. It was amazing. I thought you were going to say, was, Matthew with that prostitute. You're like, Matthew, the show's starting. <laughs> Matthew with the Get prostitute. Inside. Bowie was still alive when we did that show. <laughs> oh, God, he was. I don't think he was, but go on. He was in my hut. Uh, Grant was there, too. It's a good time. <laughs> and it all began in a shared nightmare. Four strangers found themselves in the remnants of a vaguely familiar city, broken down and choked with yellow fog. From that fog, eventually emerged a gaunt creature cloaked in tattered rags who proceeded to kill each of you in turn. Still, my favorite opening of any adventure path I've read. How do you read. beat that? How do you oh. beat that? When I read this, I'm like, this is Glass Cannon Live! <laughs> when you died, though, you woke up in a prison. Some sort of dungeon where inches away, a woman dressed as a surgeon was, was cutting into a man, strapped to a table. He was just screaming in agony. Oh, God! Ah, ah, ah. You free yourselves from the prison and go after the woman who reveals herself to be a doppelganger right before murdering one of you. A full orc played by a half man. (laughs) As you make your way upstairs, you find a rax, a rat stuck in a furnace, a wizard of sorts, played by a man with historically low intelligence. A team of four, once again, you arrive upstairs to find yourselves in an asylum. An asylum in disrepair. The walls are crumbling. The doors are hanging from their hinges. Bulging walls. Clearly something went down here. 
So if you weren't already rattled by waking up in a prison, now you realize you're in a broken down asylum. As you continue to explore, you quickly discover that the doppelganger was just a sign of things to come as more strange denizens of other planes begin to accost you and haunts manifest attempting to shake you to your very core. After killing a few more doppelgangers, you're allowed passage past a makeshift barricade guarded by a man who you find out is named Faustin York, but who you originally called Crossbow Jackson. <laughs> He leads you to a multi-denominational chapel, primarily dedicated to Phrasma, where you meet a group of log-loving survivors, led by a woman named Winter Klaxa, a sister of the Maiden's Choir Cathedral in Caliphas, who was visiting Briarstone Asylum because she and her associates were helping a royal accuser investigate strangeness in the city of Thrushmore. What strangeness? Well, apparently, the Count of Versex, a man by the name of Hasterton Lowles, abandoned his duties and disappeared. And apparently, they find out he had some business here at Briarstone. So Winter was tasked with coming here and investigating. When she arrived, she met with the administrator, a woman named Eliage Losandro. But before she could really dig in and find out more about what the Count's connection, if any, was to this place, something happened. Something shook the asylum. Yellow fog began to surround the whole building and the island, and an inmate named Ulver Zandalus led a patient uprising to take over the asylum. She tells you that her and her group of survivors want to get out but they need your help because they're trapped. There's a wall down the hallway with a crying eye on it. You decide to help, making your way past that horror and several other horrors, and eventually you find your way outside pretty quickly once you get to the atrium. Fog everywhere and strange shapes in the distance, some close, some far. Some of those shapes start coming out, these massive mounds of flesh with faces just emerging and attacking you. You have to go back inside. There's no way out. Out. So you start exploring some more. You head north. You go through a library and you eventually meet a rattling named Jenny Two Tails who, uh, along with her clan, was pushed to the surface when the foundations of the building uh, shook her rat caves and collapsed them. You promise to teach her to read, and then she's brutally murdered by one of your friends who pops up from time to time, mostly during conventions. <laughs> <laughs> mostly during conventions. You eventually find the administrator's office where said administrator is sitting in a pool of her own blood, mouth open to the sky, just spouting colored mist into the air. Like, she's like broken. You discover that she's been turned into a creature known as an Onerogen, a conduit between worlds. But sadly, she is malfunctioning and you put her out of her misery. A search of her room and the surrounding rooms gives you more clues about this Alvers Andalus, as well as Count Hazerton Lowell's. It seems Zandalus was a mute, admitted there because he was suffering from night terrors amongst several other ailments. But while he couldn't function, uh, you know, normally, he was uh, an incredibly gifted artist, so much so that Losandro had some of his uh, works on display in her office. As of late, though, it appears, as you read through her records, his art started taking on a strange tone as he began to draw things that he would have no way of knowing they existed. Things outside of the asylum on the grounds that he had never seen. He was drawing as if he was standing there sketching them for hours on end. Enter Count Hazerton Lowell's. It appears he began visiting the asylum specifically to spend time with Zandalus, 
and also claimed to Lissandro to have an answer to his illness. He took a special interest in Zandalus, and his visits became more and more frequent, until he revealed to Lissandro that he believed a special book he had in his possession called The Chain of Knights could cure Zandalus. So he cuts a deal with her. He will offer this book to her to use to cure Zandalus and perhaps other inmates as well. But in return, she, he wants her to accept a handful of new patients, former associates of his that have suffered some form of group amnesia. She can have the book to do what she wants with if she takes them in, but keeps no record of their committal. Thinking that perhaps there's a chance to cure Zandalus, she accepts. You soon realize you were amongst that group of amnesiacs. Amongst? Then, amongst. There are more? It appears so. What? This what? tiny murder clown, for example, was one of them. What? Then you find out your real names. James the Rat is really Atticus Grimm. Sheila is a man named Aldo Casimir. The guy whose name I don't know, a.k.a. Breast Friend, is really Halster Price. And Mrs. O'Lady, though she still chooses to be called as such, is a woman by the name of Cartha Malisord. Armed with this information, your search takes you even deeper into the asylum, where you stumble upon a second group of survivors. The Apostles and Orpiment, who have hounded you on your search throughout the asylum. These are Zandalus's followers who helped him in the uprising. You're greeted by a man named Dr. Ren Elborn, a German-French doctor <laughs> who <laughs> takes you to his medical tent and lets you know the sitch. He tells you that when the shit hit the fan, everyone in the Northern Asylum, these survivors pretty much had a choice. They could join Zandalus or die. He tells you that not all of the followers in this camp are mad followers of Zandalus. Many, like him, are innocent survivors, afraid for their life, afraid that they too may end up crucified and hung on the wall with bags tied around their neck, victims of one of Zandalus's lieutenants, a local serial killer known as the Bag Lady. You'd seen some of her handiwork before, finding other corpses with their heads covered in bags. He tells you that Zandalus and his top men are to the west and up in what remains of the upper halls, locked away in a maze of fog. He also tells you that Zandalus's most devoted acolytes are known as his Onerogens, and they're locked away with him upstairs as well. But he knows for a fact one of them is all alone in the Northwest Tower. He believes from his research and from his dealings with the apostles that the Onerogens hold the key to removing the mist and thereby getting to Zandalus. What you do with Zandalus is your own business, he says. So you start exploring the Northwest Halls and get attacked by more haunts, more nightmarish creatures, ghouls. During this time, you also find out while consulting the records you've collected during your search that Dr. Wren is not a doctor, but a patient of the asylum. You take that info, you go back to him and you confront him about it and he comes clean. He's an actor from a noble family <laughs> that was ashamed that he uh, chose to be a bachelor because of his unhealthy obsession with self-love. But he seems like a cool guy. <laughs> and he's one of the few friends you've made, especially as you got into the northern part of the asylum. So you continue west and you run afoul of more ghouls. Ghouls torturing a man. A couple other corpses are already there and one of them holding something under a box. After having fought a few ghouls, you're able to make relatively quick work of them, but not before Mrs. O'Lady is bitten and contracts ghoul fever. It's like Saturday night fever, but worse. <laughs> After the battle's over, you lift the box that one of the ghouls was sitting on and you find a cute little corgi. Looks like it had been abused by these ghouls. What horrible creatures. Looks scared, hurt. 
Meanwhile, Halster is, is helping to bring the man uh, who is being tortured back to consciousness. And as he, as he re- regains consciousness, he looks at all of you and says, the corgi is not what it seems. And then that cute little abused corgi begins to transform into something truly horrific. Let's go to roll 20. Oh my god! Oh Oh my god. Shugunkunkagoo. We're back in strange odds! I can't believe this. It's so it's so weird hearing all those names and everything without any alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> this is yes. Yeah, first time yes. for everything. Yeah, I feel so strange hearing like getting into this without being thoroughly insulted beforehand. <laughs> I know. That's another <laughs> Sorry, I should have just done it before we went live. Just it's to fine. We'll do it. Keep you in practice. Do it Truly tomorrow. the strangest uh, aeons of all. <laughs> <laughs> the strangest aeons with the friends you made along the way. Uh This is a tiny little creature. Description. You see that, like, it's retained uh, a portion of its canine torso, but beneath it, it's just kind of limply sitting on top of a slimy mass resembling an earthworm. And disgusting, wet, dripping veins just shoot out of its mouth and hang from its elongated face. Looks a little bit like this guy here. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, this little guy comes, uh, that, that's what <sighs> the corgi turns into. That and is And it goes awesome to uh, a- attack you. So uh, for the first time of the night, for the first time of the weekend, let's roll for initiative. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I'm like spent. This has been a day. <laughs> like if you this go has back, been a hell of a day. Hell, hell of a day here in the asylum. Oh man. All right, gotta get myself up to speed. I rolled this initial while you were talking, Joe. I thought for sure this was gonna be like a good guy. In, it was hiding in the disguise of a corgi. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna be like, I'm here to help. It was the carnival <laughs> worker. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Let's 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 talk this through, Mrs. O. Lady. <laughs> Mrs. O. Lady. Uh, Mrs. O. Lady got a uh, a solid nine. Oh, that's that's not great. That's not great. Uh, I wrote Q, so I'm going to give you a Q for your initiative. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight, Qs are wild. Classic. Uh, Aldo Casimir. Uh, Aldo rolled a natural one, so he's oh, at a seven. Wow, what a start! <laughs> yep. That's just uh, that's just terrible. North Halster? Foundry. North uh, Foundry. <laughs> <laughs> for all your random number generating needs. <laughs> My Anywhere North Foundry dice sm- smiled upon me. I got a s- 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 16. 16? Not bad, not bad. Atticus Graham. Starting off strong in the comeback with a 21. Wow. Hey, yes. Now what I will do with it, I have no idea. Probably sure. delay. Most likely. Probably the old delay. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this. Joe, that uh, you won't be surprised about. I rolled the highest initiative. <laughs> oh, get out of here. I rolled a 25, so unfortunately. That's not even. What's its bonus? What's its bonus? Plus seven. I rolled oh, a, a natty bonus. 18. Um, and I rolled it with the die that was eating shit last night, this green one. Oh, I couldn't yeah. get I couldn't get double digits started It's almost with an as 18. if the numbers that come out of it are random. One would think. One would think. Uh, that's why you got to just stick with that die. Don't uh, don't ask for a new one. Stay with, stay with it. Like you're playing craps. Uh, all right, round one of a long weekend, <laughs> guys. Take take your time. Stretch. You know, get up. Have, I know. You guys got I snacks? Ah, I, I'm going to wait for the break for, for snack time. I'm already out of liquid. That's really bad. Really oh, bad. that is very uh, bad for you. Yeah, that's not not good. Uh, you really should have an plan. IV at all times. I really, I really should. That would make this a lot easier. Uh, here's what this guy's going to do. Um, only because uh, it's great that I got this, the opening uh, decision here. He's going to go ahead and cast mirror image oh, on great. himself. How does wow, that feel, so- Matthew? 
How does that feel to have four images of him appear? Terrifying. No, uh, you know what? No, I lied. Uh, plus one image per three caster level, so two images. Not bad. Still terrifying. One was terrifying enough. Yeah. You want to see him again? There he is. Hey. Oh. <laughs> it's really scary. That's it's really, really scary. Um, uh, is this him? I'm, oh, no, that's Aldo. Where is he? Is he in the corner? He's, he's, he's this guy uh, here. Uh, okay, okay. There's three of them. You don't know which one's the one? It's more of a uh, horrific monster than a guy. <laughs> and then oh what they're going to do is move. And where it's a tiny creature, it's going to move right on to Halster's spot. Oh, oh come no. on. Now, normally Halster would get an attack of opportunity, uh, but where he is flat-footed, he does not. So, I mean, that just the roll 20 pawn, seeing those things crawling all over you. <laughs> that's so gross. <laughs> just, that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> that's, just, that's just fantastic. That's just fantastic. All right, Joe. Be creative. It is Atticus's turn. Man, good luck with that. Uh, oh, I feel like feel like an illusionist tonight, but I'm I'm so I'm so spent. I used all my illusion spells today already. Let me uh, first. Let me do a knowledge check on this thing. What would it as be? As long as like every time you cast a spell, you do with your hands, so we yes. can see those gloves. I had to take off a glove because it doesn't work on the iPad. <laughs> the glove on. I'm sitting here like doom, doom, doom. Got cut, <laughs> cut some fingers in it. Uh, go ahead and give me a knowledge planes. It's not a bad idea. Just cut this little tip off. Uh, knowledge planes. Just uh, circumcise right. the glove. Come on, Atticus. Keep those rolls going. There we go. Same roll again. Another natty 15. That's a 24 knowledge planes. <sighs> That's good. That's real good, Joe. Uh, okay. This is a creature known as an, and I might be butchering the pronunciation, but it will be canon after I say it, a sepial. It is a sakil a sepial. Sakil a sepial. Oh, yeah, yeah. Number of different forms. No need forms. to explain. Uh, <laughs> what? All right, so I won't tell you anything. Else. Uh, obviously, you can cast mirror image. You know that. Um, it has energy resistance to cold, electricity, and sonic. Okay, uh, and I'll also tell you that it can cause fear at will. Ooh, cause yeah. fear at will. It's definitely working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Was this one of your bugaboo skin? I forgot. Uh, yeah, tiny earthworm dogs. <laughs> Corgis that turn into earthworm demons. They're right on the, the shirts that that guy made for me. I you know, it was it was already in the module. I didn't uh, I didn't add it in just well, to fuck with you. bad luck. <laughs> that's just that's just bad luck. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I think that's enough information. Okay, um, and it's a mirror image. So okay, I'm just gonna spend uh, this round. Atticus is going to yes do his illusory magic and bring a magical field of uh, deflection energy around himself and cast mage armor on himself. Okay. Um, and then he's going to step back next to Mrs. O'Lady. And uh, I'm assuming that... Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on a crossbow here? Like, I, I would think that he would have it out, right? Walking around this place. Yeah. We just we had just a combat. Had That's your weapon, uh, weapon du jour, right? That's your weapon yeah, of choice. Yeah, I don't hold any other weapon in my hand, so yeah. I'm sure he's got it. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll say <laughs> Unless he, he stowed it after the battle and was like, oh, I want to pick up that corgi, maybe rub its tummy. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to try to take a shot with the light crossbow just to break a mirror image for somebody else to go after, but I, um, he, he, he went onto the square. Yeah, yeah, so now it's, it's going to be brutal. Uh, yeah. I guess mechanically it's not that much different. I would have had a minus four anyway. But anyway, that's my turn, mage, mage armor. These little earthwormy type canines just circle around Halster's body, climbing around his legs, winding up around his torso, <laughs> one of them crawling around his neck. And it is... Dun, da, 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 Halster's turn. Does Halster get the sense that if he were to move out of the square that the creatures would follow him, would remain attached to his leg and around his neck? No, no. Now, here's the thing. Like, uh, are you talking about a five-foot step? Yeah. 
I read about this a lot before we went online, and I'd be interested to you know have the chat weigh in. I've kind of already made my decision, but if someone is like, no, 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 it's this. These creatures don't have reach, so they can't like attack outside of their square. That's a tiny creature thing. Right. Zero feet of reach. However, you can make an attack of opportunity in any square that you... Uh, can attack in so I think if you were trying to move out of it it would get the attack of opportunity but any of the adjacent squares it doesn't get that's my thought but if you're just taking a five foot step no attack of opportunity um, but yeah tiny creature uh, I think it I, I think it should get the AOO in its square but none of the other squares All and right. looking on the Paizo boards before we went live as usual no definitive answer Halster is going to take a uh, timid five-foot step backwards, mostly to clear the way for the rest of his... Well, okay, that wouldn't provoke anyway, so yeah. And as part of that move action, if that counts as a move action, even though it's a five-foot step, he'd like to draw his weapon. I imagine since he was healing uh, the, the the person that warned us of the Corgi before, his, his, uh, his magical sword was not out at his throat. So I'm going to keep. Yeah, because you were working on that dude in the back. So right. yeah, you would have probably put your. I'm going to say away. that I had my shield up, like just because I was afraid of whatever happened. But the sword I have to pull out, and he will swing at this mirror image diminutive creature in this square. Uh, 17 on the die for a 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. Now give me a D6. I will say five and six hits him. One. One. All right. So you. Destroy one of the images. Nice. Oh, nice. I always feel like I'm on the other end of mirror image. I never get to actually enjoy having an image destroyed instead of having the creature hit. That's because uh, you killed nice. Pembroke. <laughs> you, you would have had plenty of chances to enjoy that incredible hobby if, if you had not killed Pembroke. <laughs> I blame myself. Because uh, who else can I blame? Yeah, I blame you too. <laughs> Halster, that is your turn. It is Mrs. O'Lady's turn. What are you uh, thinking? Okay, oh. Mrs. Knowledge religion check, would that be helpful here or no? Uh, no, it's knowledge planes, but Joe rolled really high. Really high, got it. Perfect. We auto share all the information. By the way, 1,300 uh, current viewers. Nice, nice number. 1,300 on the dot. On the dot. Yeah. All maybe paying some, respect maybe to Pember. Some people come. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> I've learned since you press F to show respect. Oh, okay. Pay respects. Pay respects. Pay respects. Uh, in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. speaking of pay, paying respects. Uh, I just have to say how much we love Steve Geddes and appreciate him. He gifted oh, yes. 100 subs tonight. 100 Geddes. subs. Wow. 100 subs. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank Hate you, to bring Steve up the Geddes. action, but man, is that worth it. You are the best. He's been with us forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Steve. Great Steve, guy. we got to get you out to a glass cannon live yeah, from Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That'll be the uh, one hundred and ten thousand dollar goal. Yeah, fly, fly Steve, Steve Getty. To fly. Last last. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. This co this community is the best, and uh, Steve is a uh, a model citizen of Glass Cannon Nation. Yes, he really is. He represents all that we love about the game. He loves yep. playing the game, but he isn't an asshole about it. He's great. <laughs> Those are the great. two th the two things we love. <laughs> That's right. You love the game and aren't an asshole. Let's exactly. That's all you need. That's really all you need. <laughs> uh, uh, talk to me, old lady. Okay, Mrs. Old Lady is going to uh, use a level zero spell, telekinetic projectile. She points at a piece of rubble and flings it at the creature whose name I can't pronounce. Okay. And I'll roll Let's see hit. where you're standing. Yeah, you got a nice clear view there. I like it. So uh, in melee the with a, in melee with a with an ally, so I take the minus four, so it is a 15 to hit. That is a big old miss, oh okay. lady. Um, here's something I forgot to do, oh, which oh I'm no. going to retroactively do. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. it's as an aura. we get to Aldo's turn. It, it's an aura, it's a gaze, actually. Oh, um, oh shh. Oh, right. Oh, come on. Uh. Eight. This hate was, the gaze. I, I hate the gaze. I almost asked because this would have affected which what I did on my turn. But all right. Um, what were you thinking? Well, do your aura and then I'll explain. Just all right. Um, obviously, with the gaze, you have the option to look away or to you know. But then you're oh. blind fighting. Um, so I'll, let's just uh, have you roll on these. Let's start with you. Uh, 
I want to. I always want to call you James Atticus. Uh, give me a will save. But well, wait, what if I just look away? Because I have the blind fight feet. Right. You have the option to look away and I don't take... really have the blind fight feet. Though. I'm a wizard. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, Jeez. Jeez, I don't know. You have the uh, liar feet. The liar feet. So I can uh, look away entirely. Uh, yeah, I'll just look away. Because I didn't need to attack him that round. So that first round, retroactively, I just wouldn't look at him. Okay. And then, so you don't even have to roll to save, I feel like. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Averting eyes. And so uh, each round, then you have a... F- ah, that's interesting. So if you avert your eyes, obviously none of you are going to wear a bl- blindfold. So you can either take it or avert your eyes. Averting your eyes, the opponent avoids looking at the creature's face, instead looking at its body, watching its shadow, tracking in a reflective surface, etc. Each round, the opponent has a 50% chance to avoid making the save. Right. Uh, okay. The creature That's with fine. the gaze attack, however, gains concealment against that opponent. So give me a uh, D100 roll. Okay. Uh, 51 D- or higher, you don't have to make the save. Okay. That is a 66. Ooh. Nice. All right. Don't have to make the save. Uh, Halster, uh, do you <laughs> I want to try- really like rolling dice with white gloves? <laughs> I got to say. <laughs> so classy. There's something very posh about it. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Halster, where you already took the attack, I'm just going to have you roll to save. It's makes not sense. that bad. So. It makes sense. Here I'm we go. I'm not going to take away your hit. So. 17 on the die for a 23. Nice. 23, you're fine. Mrs. O, lady, give me that sweet, sweet. You want to avert or you want to... Oh, no, you shot. I shot. Uh, I rolled a uh, a 10. 10. You are shaken for one round. All right. And now we get back to where we're supposed to be with Aldo. Aldo, I'm going to uh, start by making you roll this unless you want to avert and take the 50% concealment and also a 50% chance of still having to roll the save anyway. I'm much afraid, yet I can't look away. <laughs> All right, give me a will save. Natural 20. Oh! Ooh. All right. <laughs> you may throw a bomb when ready. Okay, so yeah. So it's just like, no, bad girl, bad corgi, down, down. And he tosses a bomb. <laughs> that <laughs> nice, is a, dude. 18 against touch AC. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that is a perfect thing to do with mirror image app. Obviously, there's only one image. That was, that was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> that is 16 points of fire damage. Now, would that destroy the image? And I feel like it would destroy the image Area and effect. take damage against him, right? I think, yeah. Be- yeah, yeah. I mean, there, it's the image would be taking damage oh, also. Man. So There's a rule right. on this. I'll look it up. It's really, I'm surprised we've never quite encountered I, this. We don't do we don't a lot of, yeah, do yeah, a lot of splash damage stuff, so I don't know. And we don't run into mirror image as much either. Uh, yeah, I know there's a rule on this. I, I'm pretty sure there is. Somebody said, within five feet destroys an image. Um, area effect does not, and then somebody else says, area effect does not impact images. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think I think the idea is that it hits you. Area images, of effect spells don't destroy any figments. Yeah, they just they just look like they did. Interesting, but more importantly, you hit the guy that needs to be hit. Yeah, uh, and that's fire, so it would cut through any DR. Uh, and you said 16 points of damage. Yes, and Halster needs to make a reflex save or take seven points of damage, as does the person that we just revived, and probably are going to oh, knock back. On uh, oh, that again. dude. Uh, uh, 19 on my reflex save. Nice. Eight on my reflex save. <laughs> so he takes seven points of damage? Yeah. All right. Is he on fire or he just takes No, that? no, no. Just fire damage. Okay. Uh, he's like, ah! And he goes <laughs> unconscious. Oh, sorry. Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's awkward. We just met. <laughs> he's, at, he's at negative four hit points now. Um, all right. I think that's that. Let's go to the top of the next round. All right, I wasn't uh, wasn't expecting to take that big juicy hit there, but that was a chunk. That was one point off maximum for that bomb. That's great, yeah. fantastic. I love I love Aldo. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some attacks here. It is going to m- move on to uh, Aldo's space. 
And Aldo, if you have an attack of opportunity, you get it. Do you have a melee weapon out? I don't have a uh, weapon. Okay. Out. So it just turns its attention to the the source of the bomb. Uh, I believe that would provoke from uh, Halster. Halster, right? Yeah. Yep. You're, you're, yep. It's moving away from you. So go ahead and take an AOL. Uh, natural 20. Oh! oh. Come on. Give me a image. Give me a D4. Please give me a D4. Here it comes. Oh, I got to roll a D4. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This is so exciting. Two. That's an image. (sighs) That's great. Dude, that's great. It's all good. We got to chip away at him. Uh, I'm sure that was an image. Three, Interesting four. that you didn't tell us before the roll. I was going to, but I <laughs> yeah. assume that five six was an image before three four would be an image this time. Uh, all right, it gets onto Aldo's space, and it is going to try to bite Aldo with its veiny mouth. Just uh, crack die. Come on, baby. Uh, Sixteen to hit. That's a hit. Hits Aldo. All right couple things are going to happen not a lot of damage one point of damage however it gets a free grab attack as it tries to bury its teeth into your arm as it slowly winds its body around the rest of you uh tiny little creature that's going to be a yeah it's got you grappled 28 against cmd all right so both it and you are grappled and that's its turn. Um, How much damage d- 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 was it? That was only one one point of damage. Okay. Not you. a lot of damage, but it does have you tied up. All right. Now it is Atticus's turn. Atticus, same situation, because you... I don't think this is the type of thing that if you save on it, you're good for the day. Yeah, you're not. So do you want to avert your eyes and see if you have to roll the save, or you want to yeah. just take that yeah, save? Yeah, I will avert my eyes. Okay. I don't intend to hit it anyway. 62. Ooh. I'll take it. All right. Very nice. Don't have to roll the save. Uh, and Atticus is going to be, like, kind of looking away, and he's going to trust in the power of his magic. And his little, he's got this little creepy amulet that he wears around his neck, and it just sort of, like, starts humming with energy and sh- turns, clicks into place, and then opens. Sh- and there's this little green orb inside of it. And then it's just like... <laughs> and this insane sound comes out of it. And it casts ear-piercing scream on the creature. Oh, wow. Wow. What the yeah. hell is that? Is that a necklace <laughs> of ear-piercing scream? <laughs> no, it's just a flavor... Uh, uh, sorry. What's it called? Arcane bonded object. He oh. has like a, a creepy necklace that, uh, and once per day, your bonded object can cast any spell in your spell wow. book, even if it's not prepared. Oh, uh, right. That's, um, that's really cool. And yeah. I, I still can't take you seriously in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to. Hey, we're having a good time. Uh, uh, that is nice. All right. So talk to me about the save. Uh, fortitude save. Fortitude save. Oh, Nat one. Yes, dude. Okay, buddy. Oh, buddy, this is fantastic. You is take it? four points of damage. Kay. Sonic damage. I'm not sure if he's resistant to Sonic. He is. Uh, I told you he had energy resistant Sonic, so no oh, damage. Wow. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah, I wondered why you were casting that. <laughs> yeah. I thought he said electricity, cold. I never heard Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. Uh, well, that was stupid, but he has it's actually not stupid because you failed. He failed the roll, so it, uh, he's dazed oh, for one round. Yeah. Oh, that's so he's nice. unable that's to take actions. Uh, yeah, no penalty to Lacey, but uh, I am unable to act normally. Dazed. We've had a lot of dazed lately. That's yeah. a first yeah. level spell, right? Uh, yes, second. it is. Yeah, first, yeah. that's got some good utility here uh, in the uh, the end of this book. Nice, nicely done. Golf applause. Golf applause. <laughs> uh, one of one of these things left. All the mirror images are gone, and it is Halster's turn. Halster, do you want to try and avert your eyes? And Did, take that fifty percent concealment. What are you thinking? Joe brought up a blind fight earlier. Would that help me in this situation? 
Would I be able to avoid, uh, ignore the concealment chance if I looked away so, and swung at him? With blind fight, if I'm correct, it allows you to re-roll if you fail. Yeah, yeah. that is correct. So and you get the 50% of in the, this instance, yep. correct? Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I will uh, put my shades on, not even <laughs> look at the creature as Halster swaggers over with newfound confidence never before seen within this adventure path. <laughs> now do me a favor, roll a d100. If you roll a 51 or higher, you don't have to roll to save. Perfect. Uh, 52. All right, you don't have to. Oh, I wish I was at your house so I could look at those lion dice. That, that is legit. Have been a 38. <laughs> <laughs> if I had said 53 or higher, you would have been like 55. There was, I broke my, uh, let me tell you a quick story. I broke my leg uh, during a football game freshman year. Here and, we go. The and, leg story. And I went outside. Uh, you know, my, uh, <laughs> that weekend I came back with a boot, and my uh, coach came up to me on Monday and said, "Hey, Berger, I heard you were playing pickup basketball, and that's how you broke your leg." And I, I got so angry because I was so uncoordinated. There's no chance I would ever play pickup basketball, and I feel the same way now of being accused <laughs> of lying. I'm so angry at you, Troy. <laughs> So uh, was so that the day that you decided I'll never lie again? And then once you started path, playing Pathfinder, you're like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, man, because <laughs> football was for jocks and Pathfinder's for nerds. I switched teams, so now I can lie again. New rules. No one has benefited from remote playing more than Grant. <laughs> uh, uh, to be honest, there's been no change, though, and statistically, I'm that's sure. True. That's I true. Mean, that's that is true. true. Well, he's the only player that plays with the GM screen. I got to nip, nip that in the bud when we get back in the studio. <laughs> uh, the total uh, two hit is 17. All right. So now you got to roll the 50% miss chance because you definitely, you, you averted your eyes. There's a lot of D100s here, but... Did it say 50% or did it just say the creature has concealment? Because that's 20%, right? Each round, the opponent has a... Uh, excuse me. Yes. Each round that has a 50% chance to avoid having to make the save. You did that. Then the creature with the gaze attack, however, gains concealment. So just 20%. So now roll uh, uh, a 20% miss chance. And if you fail that, blind fight will let you re-roll it. I did. I rolled a 57. So we are good to go. Nice. Total Great. damage, max damage, eleven points of damage. nice, and it's dead. Yes! yes! Oh yes! yes! Go yes! back to the plane from whence you came. Oh, thank oh, you, best awesome. friends. That was clutch, mate. Crazy. Thank Sadly, you. the blade goes straight through and pierces Aldo's heart, oh. rendering him. Oh no! Uh, rendering it's him dead. Bit of a close shave. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Not. Uh, the man in the corner is gasping for life. Uh, I'll keep you in initiative rounds just for a second here to see if you are able to help him. Uh, it is Mrs. O'Lady's turn. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady will delay. I can't help him. Okay. Or, I mean, is, is he unconscious? Could I do a heel check? He's unconscious and dying from the bomb. So I could run over and do a heel check to stabilize him. Yes. Okay, good. DC uh, 15. I mean, sorry. Can you really do that? Why Man. can't, why, why do you, tell me uh, your I? thoughts on why you don't think you can. I'm not sure it's there. Like read the heel skill. Am I crazy? Cause first I don't think aid. it's this. Oh, first aid is stabilizing. Yeah. You uh, can, okay. Literally if a character has uh, negative right, great, hit great, points great. and is great. losing hit points, you can make him stable. Great. I, I thought it was, we were just confusing it with stopping bleeding. That's different from stopping dying. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. This is a, a lady will hobble over on her cane as fast as she possibly can and roll a heel check. Staunch uh, the wound with the end of her cane. I rolled a 16. I have a minus one heal, but I got it. Oh, made nice. it. Wow. Just nicely like done. Stop the bleeding with the end of your cane. Ah! <laughs> uh, very nicely done. Uh, you are able to uh, stop him from bleeding, and now you're in this room. You came in here, and there were three of these ghouls, and uh, now they're all dead. But there's also... Three other bodies in there. One is looks completely flayed. One has been torn to pieces. And then this guy who you just saved from uh, being the third victim. Um, what do you do? While I'm with this man, sorry, I just want to make sure. Does this guy appear to have ghoul fever? Oh, that's a good question. Ooh. It's hard to tell. You don't see bite marks on him, which is a good uh, sign. During your heel check, you... Looked around, didn't see any bite marks. Um, but it's inconclusive. You, however, got it bad. I got it. 
What about a knowledge religion? Could I tell by looking at him with a knowledge religion if he is infected by it? Um, no, I'd, I'd say a more uh, thorough heel check. Mm. I'll try one. And uh, after the heel check, uh, we'll heal him with one of my blessings. That's only a six on the die. So only a 13. Probably don't know anything. But pitying this man uh, expends a use. I'm sorry, of his fervor um, to heal him for uh, six hit points. Six hit points. He comes to. <gasps> Hello, dear boy. Hello. What? What happened? I'm alive. I remember being alive, but then fire lit yeah. me. Was that was that that creature? No, it was me. Sorry, mate. Oh. That was really sorry. It is a terrible way to get introduced. I'm Aldo, by the way. Oh, hello, Aldo. Um, uh, my name. Uh, I need to look it up. I think it's <laughs> Iliki. I believe it's Iliki, but that doesn't Iliki. sound right. No, it is. It's Ilki. My Ilki. Is, uh, Ilki. Ilki. Ilki Velos. Ilki Velos. Uh, these people I did not know. They were uh, they were inmates as well. Uh, but they are no more. And he kind of like holds back some vomit when he sees that one of the guys been completely flayed and the other one horribly tortured. <laughs> these ghouls, they were, they were terrible. I've been restrained here for days. I would have been next for sure. Were you, were you a patient here? Yes. Yes, I was. I, uh, I've been here for, oh, time seems so different now, but three years. I, I committed myself, actually. I was going through some things. Uh, I have what's known as uh, severe de- depression. I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm glad you were you were cognizant enough to get some help. Yes, well, the the, the doctors and nurses here are, are, are amazing, or were amazing. Truth be told, I feel like I was making a bit of a turnaround uh, before all of this went down. Now, Could I do I a sense motive on don't this? Know what to do? Yeah. Uh, Twenty-three. Ooh, insightful. Excellent. Yeah, he's a little shy, but he doesn't seem to be being false. Um, right. There might be more information, but um, he, he even says to you, he's like, uh, honestly, my, my condition has been uh, my uh, secondary concern of mine ever since being captured by these uh, these creatures. They, and he looks around. They, they know me. They knew my name. I, I don't know them. Yeah, you you didn't even know your own name a moment ago. I didn't. I had to look it up on my Google Doc. Hmm. Terrifying. Well, if I know ghoul fever, and I think I do, <laughs> these these ghouls might once have been humans. Yes. Yes, perhaps they were... Uh, people such as myself, patients here, possibly yeah. even doctors, but d- does, this, does, this, does this ghoul disease, does it just turn you evil as well? Does your base self get uh, extrapolated, or do you retain a sense of who you were? I believe oh. that you remember a bit of what you were, but only the worst parts, only the hatred and an agony you felt during your living days remain, and all of your desires are replaced for a voracious appetite for carnal food. You seem to know a lot about this. He must be a ghoul, get him! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that sounds can horrible. you tell us how you came to be captured by these ghastly creatures? Um, I, the, the, there was an uprising of patients. Uh, I, I heard them say that it was Sandalus that started it all. I 
I've seen him, but I, I had no relationship with him. He, he couldn't speak and uh, was not brought into the common areas that often, but a word of other patients, ones that uh, were well known around the asylum, traveled to different parts. I, I spent most of my time uh, uh, in, in the southern uh, part of the asylum with uh, the less severe cases, but when the uprising started, everything just, everything just happened so quickly, and I was... I was abducted and, uh, and, and, and taken here, beaten, chained to this bed. He pulls at a chain. And um, honestly, the, between being starved and beaten, I, I, don't really, I don't really remember how long it's been. It could have been a week. It could have been a, a couple of days. But they came after me and these other two. That creature... That creature that you just defeated, I I saw it. I saw it change one night, but they didn't see. I think they thought they had just caught a dog that they were torturing. It was perhaps just waiting for the right moment to strike. Either them or me, if I were able to summon the will to defeat those ghouls. What else might he know? I mean, what else could we ask him that... He, he has no relationship with Zandalus. Uh, I'm very, I'm very hungry. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Aldo, Halster, give him some of your food. I, I don't know. I'm rather peckish myself. I don't relish the. I don't. Oh, very well. These and burns I, are making me even more hungry. If it no, right, no, you, right, you guilted mind. me into it. Here you are. Here's a couple of biscuits. Oh, thank you. And you Eat up. Oh, oh, it's delicious. Oh, I've only had a uh, Pepsi. Can't <laughs> oh, do <laughs> Pepsi. <laughs> really quench my thirst. We don't carry any Pepsi products, mate. I'm sorry. There's, I think there's a vending machine deeper in the asylum. I know, but. No, there is a, um, a cantrip, I believe, Conjure Pepsi, but I <laughs> didn't memorize it today. Just need to sleep on it. Are it you were. Are you the only survivors? Oh, no. no there are, there are no, plenty there more. Are more. We will take you there directly. Um, well, wait. Is it safe? One more question. Yes. Not terribly. Uh, it must be better than this. Oh, Chained yes. to a bed. Yeah. Left Much better than this. Feed yes. the ghouls. Definitely agree with that. Do you know the way to the Northwest Tower? Northwest Tower. Yes, I've 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 heard of this tower. They they always said that they would conduct strange treatments up there. I The doctors said this, the nurses. Yes, I would hear the doctors speaking. Sometimes they would uh, think we weren't listening, but I, I have my faculties about me. I'm just suffering in my own way and I, I, I remember them saying they used to do more unorthodox treatments up there but I, I've never seen it I believe if you just continue uh, going to the west and to the north there should be uh, a <laughs> door don't that need leads to a tower I guess I could draw you I don't a need map the <laughs> but I, I really need a Pepsi first don't appreciate your tone young man if you just continue it's somewhere to the northwest, to the north and the west, <laughs> and then look for a, a tall structure, a, a, a tower of sorts. If you see stairs, go up the stairs. <laughs> tower of sorts. <laughs> yes. You're that quite probably for someone best. who's relying on us to escort him back to safety. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just I'm very parched. I mentioned my need for sustenance and a you Pepsi. Know, I was just thinking that if I had access to an alchemical laboratory with my craft alchemy skill, I could probably make something very close to Pepsi. <laughs> so I'm definitely putting that on the list when, when we have the time. I'm going to spend He would time. be psyched. It's on the list. I haven't had one in years. All right. Anyways, uh, is this, this, this gathering of survivors, is it safe? Is, you say it's not that safe? Um, well, yes, you must do. You would do well to keep your the fact that you have all of your faculties about you rather secret. Um, I'm afraid the camp that is closest to here, while reasonably safe, is 
inundated with the apostles in Orpament uh, who are really praising Xandalus. Uh, at least with my understanding, it has been several months since I've played. I remember them being very murderous, though, regardless. Yes, and, and, and how do you feel about um, crucifixions? There's a lot, of, a lot of them there. Crucifixions and bags. An anti, anti crucifixion. Oh, that's well, oh, right. Well, that's going to be a. We fall mm. on the same side of that one. But uh, <laughs> I think you can make your way uh, there as long as you are, you know, you pretend to be one of them. Am I crazy? Is this wrong? Or does he need to go all the way back to winter? Is there is there anyone safe that I could talk to? And is there any. Are they all mad no, followers? No, 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 no. Yes, of course there is. There's a, an actor. A rather well-known, I guess, actor in his circles, uh, who is uh, seems sane uh, at the very least. Who was a patient at one time and is also putting on airs that he is following this cult. He's if he sounds German or French, just go with it. That's the one. Okay. Look for the German French actor doctor we think yes, he may be both, from both switzerland his german yes both his german and his french are unbearably bad and that's how he would stand out to you you'll know without a doubt you'll know him instantly that he's yes he's a talentless actor and, 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 and where is this if 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 i were to go that way oh, we will we'll, we'll take you there ourselves oh, I, oh so you'll introduce me I, that's good uh, yes I don't have yes to. yes yes we won't okay. let you walk in there blind but you must rather act uh as if you are a babbling fool that uh follows this Andalus, or you may uh, find yourself crucified. I see. I try to play up the depression angle. That might yes. work. All right, yes. that, that won't be hard. I'm, I'm very upset. Yeah, I'm um, sure this can't have helped. No, I'm, I, I'm trying not to think about it, but it's Don't very difficult. Don't think about it. Um, all right, well, last thing I'll ask. Um, could you remove this uh, shackle from my leg that's attached to this uh, bed frame? Uh, it's it's really cutting into my skin. Oh, you know, that is a pickle, isn't it? You don't happen to have the key, do you? Funny thing, if I if I had the key, wouldn't you think I'd, <laughs> yeah. I'd use it? I suppose I could drag the bed down the hall, what well, with my two hit points. You will have somewhere to sleep, then. Yeah, so, yes, that'd be well, rather convenient. Guess, well, what better way to look like a crazy person than dragging a bed around like a loon? <laughs> uh, Halster, is there any way you could break this chain? Um, I can attempt to, uh, but sometimes a chain-breaking ceremony ends up uh, being an amputation. Shall uh, I try to warning. pick the lock then first? Oh, can I pick I? the lock? <laughs> Aldo is just going to search the bodies in the room. Maybe one okay. of them might have a key. I kind of wanted uh, Halster to work on uh, breaking it, just so it could be a, a montage of you trying to do it. While uh, <laughs> I was saying like, uh, and if you don't love me now, you never love me, me again. I can't break the chain. To me, I'll break the chain. That would have been fun, but if you want to pick the lock, we'll do I'm that. I'm going to roll a disabled device. You can All still right. play that. You can still roll the montage if you That's want. That's what's happening in the uh, alternative universe of this <laughs> uh, playthrough in my head. Uh, all right, so uh, meanwhile, Aldo, you're searching, and the two uh, bodies in the cages, they look like they were patients as well. They kind of have the robes, uh, not, of, not of the apostles, but of uh, people that were committed here. Um, the third cage uh, looks like it has the body of an orderly in it. Um, and he has on him a broken padded club. It's broken. Uh, a, a, a nice looking heavy wooden shield. Uh, three vials of antitoxin, I'll just tell oh. you. Uh, and a silver necklace etched with the holy symbol of Shailen. Oh. Uh, any uh, Shailen fans in the audience? I love Shailen. I'm yes, a huge Shailen big fan, fan myself. Beauty, all that. Uh, can I, I'm going to do a quick appraise on that necklace. I bet you oh. the doctor uh, worships Shailen, actor. Oh, probably. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. actor's deity. Uh, 28 on the appraise. 28 on the appraise for the necklace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's worth 50 G's. Oh, Ooh. yes. Oh, I've yes. decided to call gold pieces G's from now on. That's a good plan. 
50 G's. Um, I rolled a 14 on the disabled device, by the way. Okay. Uh, doesn't open. But if you take your time with it, it's not going to set off a trap. You can right. take your I time. I could take 20. All right, I'll take it. Unless you really just want to hone your skills. Um, oh, you, didn't uh, get it that time? What? The <laughs> second time's the charm. <laughs> Please hurry. It's cutting into my leg. Uh, you <laughs> pop it open. As you pop it open, you see around where his ankle was a bite mark. Oh, uh, well, funny story. Time to go meet the doctor and all the crazies. Well, uh, he, he, uh, well, unfortunately, remember, remember the time we talked about becoming a ghoul if you were to be bitten? Did we talk about that? I don't quite remember. Yeah, if we didn't, uh, I'll talk about it now. Um, might have been somebody else. It might have been somebody else, but uh, I'm pretty confident it was you because I now see you've been bitten by a ghoul. Oh, that. That's a pre-existing bite. Um, <laughs> uh, that was from... Uh, what old, bit you exactly? Uh, a, a patient here. Uh, he, he's a biter. Uh, old Bitey Johnson, they called him. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, a old name Johnson. <laughs> more appropriate I cannot think of, for he was uh, a bit mad. Uh great conversationalist, but occasionally he would just bite your ankles like there was no tomorrow, and that that's clearly the work of old Bitey Johnson. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure you're right. Nevertheless, uh, I'm not Well, no, sure. no, wait, wait. Now, let me do a quick examination. I do some skill in this field. Sir, if you please keep your eyes on this pen. Trace yes. them. Yes, all right. right. Let me get a good look. And that is a 20 on the heel check. Uh, yeah, there are, like, fang marks in there that are inconsistent with a human bite. Oh, dear. Well, on the plus side, you'll be fine until you die. Why won't we all? Now let's go get that Pepsi. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm, no. Perhaps you'd better come with us. Perhaps the doctor has the means to treat him. I believe that was the the plan. Uh, Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Let's go. And so, do you leave the room? Yeah. 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 I mean, one last pass. Let me just do a perception. Uh, Not on the stuff people were carrying, but just on the room itself. Uh, See if we missed anything. Uh, That is a 13. Okay, just perception? Yeah, just perception. Yeah. don't uh, don't see anything. Looks like Aldo grabbed everything: the cl- broken club, the the nice shield, and the antitoxin, and the uh, Bimbob Shaylin necklace. All right. Yeah. Let's go talk to the uh, fake doctor. Okay, Grant. You have a question. On the way there, uh, Halster will uh, surreptitiously detect magic over the items that uh, 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 Sheila has found. Ooh. Okay, Aldo Casm. You detect magic, and you see uh, magic glowing from the heavy wooden shield. Oh. oh. At that moment, oh. it's like that uh, meme online where uh, the guy's walking with his girlfriend, and he looks back at the other one as he looks at his own shield and sees this new shield. He's, he's very excited <laughs> about this spellcraft check. Uh, so I'll do a spellcraft on him. Okay. Um, that's a two. Uh, that, that's a two. That's two. Uh, allow me, Halster. I think I can turn this over. What abilities it has here. Uh, oh, there we go. It's a 21. You're going to like this one, uh, unless you don't like the weight of it. That's a plus one heavy wooden shield. Nice. Oh, awesome. We don't, we don't do a lot of board characters. Plenty no. of sword characters. Not a lot of board characters. You know no, there's a board character? Uh, Lord Northwood. That? Never heard of him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Matthew. I'm, Matthew, I'm sorry about Troy. He's tough, man. He's tough. I'll never break the chain. <laughs> never break the chain. Uh, all right, so you take uh, Ilki Velost. Uh, I was going to say, you take Old Bitey Johnson back to um, the... 
back to the camp, and I'm assuming you don't take the shortcut through the courtyard. Uh, you go the long way around, um, past where that haunted cauldron is, uh, past the uh, kitchen area with... Uh, what was her name? I don't know. I just know that one of the guy's names is Ryder McClintock. I say you it in the notes. Nobody read my notes. I read the notes. I have the notes. I made the notes. <laughs> the four names are in there. What Susie Wanamaker, Susie Ivory Wanamaker, Gardeen, and Steve, Ivory Gardeen, and Steve Jefferson. Steve Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, uh, Stevie Jeff. Steve Jefferson. You think I Steve really Jefferson is Jeff and Steve? So, Ooh, yeah. Did Chelly Steve end up here? Dude. No, he's really a good no guy. Knowing. He's he a good guy. Good guy. <laughs> By most I'm telling accounts. You, he gets a bad rap. <laughs> he's it's a, a good real, dude. It's a real litmus test for a person <laughs> Loyal. what their opinion is of uh, Chelly Steve. <laughs> Loyal. That's what Chelly Steve is. You know what, though? Sometimes he drinks, and, you know, it's dicey. Yeah, dicey sits. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little dicey. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I really want to write some Ryder McClintock fanfic. <laughs> uh, you come back into the, the the big cafeteria there, and you know they're just a bunch of the apostles, kind of uh, giving you suspicious eyes, looking at this uh, shirtless man you brought in, uh, eyeing him and you suspiciously, while others are walking around, and clearly they're in on the uh, the real situation, and they're. Just like pretending to be crazy, but winking at you. But they're still looking with apprehension at this, you know, uh, malnourished, uh, bloodied man that you bring in. Uh, Dr. Elbon comes out. Oh, yes! Wonderful! More! More to join the armament! Please! Oh, you look hot, and you probably need some food and drink. Uh, welcome! Welcome to your new home. You have done such good, my friends. All of you, join me in my tent. Oh! And he uh, kind of waves <laughs> you in the tent. <laughs> As you get in the tent, he's like, who's this guy? Uh, well, it's oh. rather, rather a long story. I'm afraid he's a patient here. You don't recognize him at all. His name is Ilki. Ilki? Ilki Bartokamus? No. <laughs> oh, they no, know I'm, each other. Oh, let's no, do the I, dance of joy. I don't know an Ilki, a patient here. Well, if you never are. met him before, he seems of relatively sound mind. He is a, was a patient here, is a patient here, I suppose and was unfortunately captured by a round of ghouls. Now take a look at his ankle. He's got a nasty bite there that uh, appears to have gone deep enough to perhaps infect him with a ghoul fever. Also so, um, also a bit yes. depressed. Well, yes. Well, I can't do anything for the latter, but I might be able to work on his leg. Did you say ghoul fever? We well, did. Perhaps. We are supposing. Uh, this is... We sort of... We looked it up on WebMD, but it's not it hasn't really... Uh, diagnosed, in and if it were uh, ghoul fever, am I correct in um, kind of pulls your side, yes. assuming he will? Okay, uh, and then you should. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Speaking um, of ghoul fever, I'll gladly nice to help meet you. you. Just talking to my friends. Yes. Uh, in a totally unrelated matter. Yes. Yes. Speaking of ghoul fever. Um, we know you're not a real doctor, but do you happen to have any way to cure ghoul fever? Cure uh, ghoul fever? No, I, I don't. If I did, we wouldn't have this problem. Uh, I told you, uh, or I didn't tell you, but I, I, I left it out. I should have told you there are ghouls roaming the halls. Uh, but I knew you'd, you'd make short work of them if you found them. Um, but no, I do not have any uh, cure for it. I might be able to uh, pray to uh, Shailen and ask for her mercy in uh, being blessed with some ability to help you make a new save against it. But, well, there uh, is, uh, there I is one... There is one sure cure for a ghoul fever. What's that? <sighs> yes, yes, that's what. Don't want to say anything, but do. he's extremely weak and very depressed. So be easy prey. And none of you have uh, fallen prey to this, I, I assume. I have ghoul fever as well. I have it also. You have ghoul fever, or was it filth fever? Uh, I have. Right. 
school fever. Check, you check have school. Joe's notes. Yes, uh, Halster, you have Phil fever, I'm afraid. Aldo. Uh, <laughs> Aldo, sorry. Uh, Phil fever, I'm afraid. Uh, rather less deadly, but it's frightening. Well, I'm not feeling all well. <laughs> then you I have the, the I am fever. afflicted with ghoul fever. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, a moment with your friends. So you understand here what we'd have to oh, do. Yes, yeah, yeah, just, of course. Does she know uh, it's just, that? It's, or I'm maybe? sure she's a very intelligent woman. I'm sure she okay. understands it's only a matter of time. before She, she lived a you know, good life, it, it yeah, seems. Before so. a hostler comes up behind her and slits her throat. She knows. What are you talking about over there? I'm so oh, nothing. Just uh, Mr. Lady. <laughs> you look acting. wonderful this evening. Wonderful. Thank All right. Honest. Well, I will take care <laughs> of the soon to be monster and uh, get him some clothing and uh, introduce him around. Uh, did you tell him he should probably act a little crazy? Yes, he we did. did. We okay, did. good, good, good. Good. He's uh, up to speed, as it were. Excellent. All he right. He's going well. to drag a bed all the way over here, but we talked him out of it. What is your plan? Are you are you going back out there to head to the Northwest Tower? Are you? What are you doing? Uh, my plan is uh, I'm going to need some rest, and I will need to look at my book. I have no no spells memorized at this moment. Uh, I need to I need rest in order to be able to uh, read my book again. I look at it now, and it's all nonsense to me. I, my brain is is fried, even it's been even though it's been such a short time. But it's very dangerous out there. You know what happens if you rest? Yes, the dangers. Yes, I, yeah. yes. And I believe my fever will have some ill effects on me. Oh, uh, yes, and, and his as well, if it mm. ticks once per day. Um, well, it's, you are obviously welcome here. You are one of us now, one of, one of the apostles, as they believe. Um, that is up to you. If you would uh, like to rest, uh, our accommodations are available. Um, but you do know the dangers. Anyways, let me get your friend here um, a robe um, and uh, introduce him around. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, I'll be back momentarily. And he uh, says, come here, you old son of a gun. And uh, <laughs> takes him out of the tent into another tent. And you four are left alone in there. What do you guys talk about, mm. decide to do? So if we do rest, what is school fever? Is it con damage or dex damage? What is I believe it's con damage until you die and turn into a ghoul. Yeah, so uh, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, less effective if we rest, but uh, unless you pass. If I pass, I get to, I get another save, and if I pass my save, then it doesn't take down. I believe so. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what the cure is. Like it is might it be two one saves save or two saves. For cure. Let's see. I can tell you that. Uh, disease. Do, 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 once per day cure. Two consecutive saves. Oh boy, it's bad news. Um, but if I save, I won't take any of the damage. It's con damage. con damage and dex damage. Now see, I knew it. Brutal, absolutely brutal. But yeah. if I save yeah. tomorrow, then I don't take any con or dex damage. Which is on me. Right, and then you're one save away from curing it. But if you fail that next save, you start the clock over. All right. Well, what a way, what a way to go, months. Mrs. O. All right. Uh, you know what? You earned it. You guys had a long day. Uh, fighting ghouls, killing haunts, eating apps. <laughs> so what a way to go, you... Mrs. O. Sounds like a song uh, by a ska band from the late 90s. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go, Mrs. O. What a way to go, Mrs. O. <laughs> um, so he takes you to your, uh, your tent and you bed down for the night. While you're sleeping, you all have a very similar dream. You're surrounded by a yellow mist. Not surprising. But from the mist, you see trees growing out of it. Normally, you wouldn't be able to see beyond the mist in all directions, but you see a lush forest emerge. But you hear something in the distance. And so instinctively, you all 
walk towards it. And you're all having individual dreams, but you're sharing the same exact um, scene, as it were. You continue to move towards the sound, and it sounds like a like a padding of feet, but they don't sound quite as soft as a footfall or a boot fall. There's, they're more hard, like a clopping. And then in the distance you see, throughout the mist, what looks like a white horse. It's almost like it's asking you to follow it, so you go deeper and deeper and deeper in. And finally, you see the horse 10, 15 feet in front of you with its hind quarters facing you, its tail going back and forth. It's beautiful. It's white. It shimmers, even though the light around you is covered in yellow for the most part. So you walk towards it and you kind of reach your hand out to pet it. And as you do, the horse's head turns and you see that the head is just the face of a man elongated like the face of a horse and his mouth is wide open (laughs) and just a rainbow of liquid is falling out of it. And he screams and just covers you like a color spray with all of that. And you all come to. Oh, God. That's all really horrible. That's horrible, dude. Come on. I need you all to roll a good old-fashioned did you rest will save. Oh, no. That image reminds me of our good buddy Ambrosia's fantasy team image. The Julia Robertses. Oh yeah, <laughs> just look up. Just you got to tell Google the story. Image. Just tell Julia. the story. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, because it involves our good buddy Nick Lowe. We made a fantasy league, <laughs> Troy and I, and we invited our buddy, you know, separate buddies that we knew were good at fantasy and uh, we're into football. And my buddy Ambrosia from my old job joined Skids the league. Kids in that league. Yeah. Uh, he he came to the Boston live show. Uh, hung out for a little bit, left, come, came back for the after party. At the after party, he's like, man, that show is awful. It's unbearable to watch. <laughs> so I went down the street and grabbed a beer, but uh, man, this after party's awesome. <laughs> he, he, uh, he wears his heart on his sleeve, that uh, Matt Ambrosia. He sure does. So uh, anyway, he got that in the league awful. and he was like, it was, it, was, uh, it was draft night. He's like, I don't know what to name my team. And Nick Lowe hosted our draft. You remember this? We had him host the draft. Nick doesn't know yeah. anything about football. Every he's year. Not, he wasn't in the league, yeah. Right. And so, he did the national anthem. He, had, yeah, he so wrote the a first song about all of us. He, he wore, wore like a tuxedo. A yeah. He wore his wedding tuxedo. He sang songs. He announced each pick of the first round. It was very funny. And uh, and Ambrosia didn't have a team name. He's like, what should my team name be? I'll, I'll let Nick pick it. Nick, who does, you know, he's not into football at all. And Nick just goes, the Julia Robertses. <laughs> but he's like, Done. So we yeah. took and it's it. It's the plural possessive, like Robert's. Yeah. Is. yeah. yeah. <laughs> the plural, plural possessive. And then he took it and he uh, went ahead and uh, Google imaged, like, scary image of Julia Roberts. Look it up. Google image it. I bet you you'll find it. It's like somebody just photoshopped this image of her mouth, like, super wide yeah. open, like that horse. And it's horrifying. And that's his team logo. Yeah. <laughs> Point of right. order before the saves. Yeah. Oscar would like to expend all of his healing spells remaining for the day to get everyone topped up in tippy top shape before we rest. Okay. All right. That's good. And you think you had enough to get everybody where they need to be? I had two one d eights and uh, one one d six left, so I could roll okay. if I have to. But. Were you guys good? I feel like you didn't take a lot of damage against no. those ghouls, but I can't I took remember no how many. damage. I took and no you guys damage. were fresh coming into that, right? Mm-hmm. Because you rested after the night gone fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, great. we did. We did some wanding. Yeah. Yeah. All right, some consensual wanding. Uh, let's go. Let's go around the horn here. Who wants to start? Any uh, volunteers? Uh, yep, I will start. Pretty easy. Uh, got a natural two. So okay. the whole point of resting ruined, <laughs> and I really don't understand this adventure. <laughs> you wake up haggard and unrested, and as a result, regain no hit points from natural healing. Uh, you take a cumulative minus one penalty on that will save in the future. And uh, what did you, but did you fail by 10 or more? 
Uh, yeah, I'm assuming I get. Well, I got a, fifth, a five. A five. Uh, I'm is trying it, to remember what is your is it DC fit? I'm trying to remember what five plus well, ten no, is. No, but you <laughs> have failed before, haven't you? I don't remember. Dude. I think I, I have a list here, so I'm trying to remember. So you rolled a I 15 didn't fail the total? last one. I no, know I, know I didn't, didn't fail, fail the last, last one. one. Uh, what did you What did you roll total? Five. Five. No, but that's your total roll with your bonus. Yes. You rolled a five. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, by five or more. I'm sorry. I thought for some reason I heard ten or more. Yeah, in my I know. Head. So what did like you it roll? Was, like it was two e. What was your will save? Five. Five. Okay, yeah. So I rolled you take, a natural two. So not only do you not heal, uh, you take damage. You take one point of damage. You wake up with bite Oof. marks on your skin, and you look down at your skin, and they seem to glimmer like a rainbow. Uh, uh, oh, looks like a horse jaw. Um, so, yeah, you, you wake up rested, regain no hit points. And you can't prepare spells if memory serves, which is just so preposterous. Yeah, that's like, that's horrible, man. Yeah, yeah. So, like, as a third level wizard, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm just utterly useless to the party. I'm I meet in the room. That's well, what I am. Point of order, and apologies for my memory as well. But can we not go back to the chapel to sleep ever again, where we don't yeah, have nightmares? We 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 can. I I think that we just. I mean, Troy kept pushing us live to not do it. I think because he was like, "You're really gonna walk all the way back there, risk all that danger, let those people know that you're with now." that we like are with those guys and not really with them the apostle northman all that stuff that's true like, there there were reasons to not go back but like man like to going into like mini boss fights what how does this make any sense well, i just the thing don't, is, i can't wrap my head like, around it at this point you probably are going to want to go back after we see how we go around the horn here you just just cumulatively decided you don't want to let the apostles know that there's another chapel full of survivors yeah, so right. you just need to make an excuse to not make them follow you let's finish with the rest of the saves here grant Burger. Here it comes. 18 on the die for a 23. Grant, you're great. You know what? Give yourself an extra spell. Uh, <laughs> Aldo, give me a will save. Right. Oh, that is a 7. No, 16. 16? You're all right, too. That's uh, that's, that's too good. Nice. One bad. Nice. Matthew, what do you got there for 14. a 14. 14, you're all right too, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I, right. you guys well, don't need to go back the, to the what chapel. What about the important save? Yeah, now I got to make my a fortitude save. Let's yep. make uh, a four. Let's do filth fever first, since oh the uh, penalty isn't as bad. Uh, four old. Oh. Natty 17 on the die. Natty 17 on the die. All right. You now have one save towards the filth fever save. I'm pretty sure you didn't have a save yet towards no, it, yes? No, I failed last time, so That's I right. was at zero. Whereas uh, the other two guys are good. All right, so you now have one save towards the two consecutive saves needed. Unless I have filth fever mixed up here on my notes with, I want to make sure I'm not making I think it it's two saves. I extra think. hard for you. It is two saves. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's Phil Fever's dex and con damage, too. It's yep. just as bad. Um, you just don't turn into a ghoul afterwards. Just Matthew, you just, you just die. Can <laughs> anyone, you just die the old-fashioned way. Can anyone possibly use the heal skill to treat a disease on me? Oh, right. No, I can do it. I can try. Uh, that, is a, that is an 11. 12. Oh, well, I will try to aid... And I fail. I'll, can I aid them? I'm working on myself. Uh, after they both rolled? I'm sorry, no. I'll roll my own check on you, Mrs. O'Lady. And I'll aid. Natural 20! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Right, so what do you get? A plus two or plus four bonus? It's a plus four. Plus four. Okay, that's great. That is right. fantastic. Yeah. Give it to me, O'Lady. All right. Uh, okay, I rolled a 15, so 20. Nice. That's one save needed towards beautiful curing beautiful ghoul fever you guys are all right you want to head to the chapel and rest proper so that uh atticus has a full complement of spells to start the day kind of i mean it's up to you guys if you want me to push forward i'll push forward i'll just let you know like cantrips that include detect magic and mage hand and a crossbow that's that's pretty <laughs> much what you got and a small crossbow at that yeah all right. um What's like up the, to you guys? Why I like the idea I will move forward. My, maybe I'll be able to cure my, my ghoul fever. 
tomorrow morning. Yeah. I also like returning here to a camp just entirely infested with ghoul fever everywhere and just like <laughs> counting down the days until they all turn into ghouls. It'll be a great battle. So let's go. <laughs> all right, let's let's uh, let's head back to the chapel. What's the excuse you give people? There's a couple guys standing at the door. Hey, where are you guys going? We're on the search go. for some Pepsi. Grant, you're still muted. We're going to go kill... Some people. <laughs> yeah. even doing we voice. intend to <laughs> spread. <laughs> we intend to spread the word of the apostles' anointment. I heard person now. For me, uh, I am particularly drawn to Zandalus's art, and I heard there were some pieces to the south that had not been uh, discovered yet. <gasps> if I could find those and bring them back, they would bring me so much joy. Well, shouldn't we go with you as well, in case you run afoul of horrible creatures? No, I can handle myself dangerous. in a battle. No, you can't. You can't, mate. Look at what, what is... I can do with this. No, he you're no good. a bedpost. No. No. We, must prove, we must prove ourselves alone to Zandalus. That is our challenge. That is our charge. You may have your own challenge one day. Zandalus sees... Sandalus Words sees. fail. Words fail. Praise, praise. Sandalus does see. All right, well, maybe one of these days you'll let me come on your adventure. Never. What is your name? What is your name, ma'am? Mark Johnson. <laughs> Mark Johnson. <laughs> Solid name. That's a strong name. It, it, yes. it strikes fear in the hearts of your enemies. Well, some people around here have a nickname for me that I don't. Not too keen on. What is it? They call me Old Bitey Johnson. <gasps> oh! And we'll see you after the intermission. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> intermish! Intermish! We made it! We made What's it. up, guys? Stick with us. us. Fill we have up an our amazing sodas. clip. We have an amazing clip for you to watch. Just watch this myself. It's awesome. <laughs> Hang in there. We'll be back. We'll be back. Ah. Uh. This marathon is exhausting. I know. When is it over? God. Mm. Can't a guy just go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, I'm we've glad. never done this. We've never done I this. I know. No. no. I'm happy. I got to say, that was, I was taking it all in over the break, and I was like, I am so glad we're back in Strange Ants. I yeah. really am. That was just great. It's, you know, even though, it, you know, wasn't much as like an encounter and an NPC interaction, and everything. It's just, it's so great to, to talk to an NPC and have it be, you, you, you suspect them of, you know, like you immediately are doing sense motives in case they're like a doppelganger. Then you're like worried that he got bit and you might have to just like murder him on the spot. <laughs> then you're like, well, which camp do we take him to the really safe camp or the camp where he's got to like lie to be safe? Like, it's a great book one. It's amazing. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah. That's what I felt when I read it. I was like, this is one of the best. And I say this, I know about a lot of the stuff I read, but I was like, this is legitimately one of the best AP books I've ever read. It's by F. Wesley Schneider, who used to be the editor in chief at Paizo. And I, you know, I never got a chance to meet him, but just reading uh, some of his stuff on social media, I think we like a lot of the same things. He's like big into anime and berserk. And uh, he was way into kingdom uh, death horror, I think before uh, it became uh, as big as it is. Um, um, it's a great, uh, great book. And I wonder like, what do you guys think happens next? What do you think book two is? I was thinking you know, about that a lot. I, it's right around this time that you kind of feel like the seeds are starting to be sowed. What do you think? I don't know if we're supposed to go to another geographic location. Forget going to go like leave. That's what I the think. Asylum. I think we leave. I think we leave the asylum in book one. I think that's what it is. It's getting I know out of we, the asylum. We're definitely going to leave, but I don't know if we're going to leave and be somewhere in Galarian or go like planes traveling. I, that's that's my yeah. question. I have no I clue. I don't think we're on. I think are we? Do we know we're even on Galarian right now? Or that's the thing. It's like yeah, it's possible don't. that it's revealed we are in some sort of Wizard of Ozzy situation where it's like either a dreamscape or an you know an upside down or an in between or something like that. Uh, I think there's a lot of options there for what it could be. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how we're ever going to pull it off, but I would love 
to figure out a way to actually play through all six of these books. You know, I, I, there's no way that we can do it just on Glass Cannon Live, two hours a month, uh, even if we ramp up those shows uh, to uh, like two shows a weekend. But I, I don't know. I think if we if we enjoy doing this marathon, it'd be fun once in a while. I'd be like, all right, let's let's get through more of this book because it's just a phenomenal story. And I think having looked ahead at some of these books, it just gets weirder and crazier and more Lovecraftian. And then there's more horror uh, adventure stuff added in um, that you can play around with. I got you. I got you covered. Now, this isn't going to get us through all six books, but you take a January, for example, and you don't do a live show. And you take a February, for example, maybe you have one live show that month, but like you're not doing anything in those months. It's lockdown, right? Man. So January, instead of doing a live show and doing two hours, you do a marathon one weekend in January. Then fun. in February, even if you have a show, you do another marathon in February. And once you get into spring and summer, weekends are tough. You know what I mean? But in the dead of winter, and the holidays are out. Nothing in else to do. the dead of winter, yeah. it's just like, why not do Strange Aeons marathons? I don't know. Think about oh, that. I know. We could be in book three by the middle of next year. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think it's a fun idea i mean yeah. I, well we're only an hour and a half in let's see how we feel on That's sunday right. at 6 p.m yeah. uh before we jump back in though we said we were going to talk more uh in more detail about some of these patreon goals um you know it doesn't look like we hit any since we started but that's mainly because most people have been uh upping to the annual uh yes. annual subscription which is the best deal in the biz you know what i mean yes. if you're planning on sticking around for 12 months anyways you get five percent off you lock it in you don't have to worry about it and there's so much exciting content coming out for the next year and so that number is just kind of hovering right now but it's it's helping us out a great deal so uh we want to thank you for that as new pledges come in which is what's going to get us new pledges and updated pledges uh that's what's going to get us to hit these goals let's talk about these goals a little bit uh <laughs> first one i mean this is just let's be honest we're all going to take part in it here or there but there's one person that's going to be there arguably every single time this happens and it's mr skidmar spearheading yeah. the initiative <laughs> oh nice transition oh that man. was very nice, nice. transition <laughs> good job there Saul bass Skid, yeah. you uh, love. This is right up your alley, man. Oh, yeah. You go over Movie Skid's night. house, and it's just after, you know, hours and hours of drink, and Skid just starts putting on movies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> or in the, the, in the chats here, in the Skype chats, I'll put on a movie in my own background. Yeah, it's my favorite thing in the world. It's the thing that I miss most about pre the before times is being able to get together with a bunch of friends and just watch a movie, a silly movie, a great movie, a TV show, whatever. And so Twitch has this functionality, this new functionality, so where cool. you can take anything that is available on Amazon Prime, anything that's free that with an Amazon Prime subscription, and do a watch party on Twitch with it. So that's what we're planning to do. There's, I'm uh, up for suggestions, but I'm really excited. I know Buckaroo Banzai is on there now. I would love to do Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> Uh, Battle Beyond the Stars with Richard Thomas, I think, would be a blast. It's really goofy, crazy, <laughs> Seven Samurai inspired sci fi pick. I would I love, love to do. I love Richard Thomas. I do too. He's awesome. He's and you know he he's John also Boy like a, the Waltons. he's also a good dude, like a really good dude. Oh, do you know him? Yeah, which well, my wife does, which is a nice bonus. Oh, she she's okay. worked with him many times, and she's like he's the nicest guy. And I always I always love hearing that. That's great. He should he should look after that mole though. He should uh, at some point he should take care of that. But so actually, what I would love to do, Silverado. I, would, so we could do, I don't know. If Silverado's on there. I wish I could do the original V miniseries from 1983 or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. I wish that was available. I would do that in a heartbeat. I would do that after this marathon tonight if we could. But again, I'm up for suggestions, and we could all pitch in too whatever you guys want but uh, i'm so i also think that. that you'll have a rather regular co-pilot for that series in one mr matthew cabotacaza who truly appreciates film at, at a skidmar <laughs> level i have not recognized a single title that skid has just mentioned besides besides v <laughs> you don't know buckaroo bonsai i don't know buckaroo bonsai. we gotta do buckaroo bonsai man <laughs> it's the best movie of all times it well, should be on criterion and to me, that's part of the that's part of the fun. It's like you watch it with somebody who hasn't seen it. That's on mic. You know what I mean? They oh, can yeah. react to it live. Yeah, yeah. If only oh, Peter Weller episodes were on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Peter well, Weller, Jeff Goldblum, Jeff, Jeff John Lithgow 
It is a wow. fantastic movie. It is a fantastic movie. Why don't we I watch def- it? We could just watch it right now. It's good. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna That'll make this marathon, marathon flyby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I'm just going to turn it on. Uh, second monitor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very close to that one. Uh, that's certainly one we're going to hit this weekend. And uh, I mean... This is right up so many people's alleys. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, the next one is obviously something that people have wanted for a long time, and we figured out a way to do it, is to have Cannon Fodder, uh, the audio release. You know, we've been doing it on Crowdcast. Uh, Joe has been uh, spearheading this effort to keep it going uh, every week, every Friday. And uh, obviously the original plan was something we'd be doing on the road, something we'd be doing in the hotel, doing blow and talking about... <laughs> the show um but but now we're stuck at home and uh joe's like begs us to be guests every week so now we're gonna make it a thing it's gonna be live on twitch and it's gonna enter this premium audio tier joe talk about the new the new fod the new and improved fod yeah it's so funny fod has gone through so many iterations so many evolutions but that's because it's 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 a it's an interesting animal fod uh because it's it's the way that we connect with you guys in that evolves it takes different forms as the audience changes as the content changes uh it's, it's always changing and we had said a long time ago that fod couldn't survive as a purely free product because it is it's you know it doesn't it's, it's not interesting to people that <laughs> well it, no it's because it's not interesting to people that don't already know the shows so yeah. we're not reaching new people uh by doing this but it always pained me pained me that our people that uh, our diehard listeners to everything can't watch it either for one or two reasons. One, because they simply can't watch video because they don't have the time or uh, the ability. Uh, and two, and I and I completely sympathize with that because I don't watch any video. Uh, I only listen to stuff because I'm always too busy. And two, because Crowdcast is just, I don't have that many problems with it, but people have problems with it. A lot of people have had a lot of issues with Crowdcast. So we've been you know, testing it over, I guess, what you would call a nine-month beta, and it's not going well. Uh, people are just not, they, they, people have a problem on mobile. People have a problem if they're in another country. People have a problem. And so it's it just sucks. like, yeah, it's getting very tiresome. <laughs> and, and what bothers me doing the show live as a host is the 40 second delay. That's a killer. You can't in- interact with an audience on a 40 second delay. So <laughs> he's got the gonna, Julia Robert picture yes. up while you're talking. <laughs> yeah, he found it. Found it. Wow. That's, That's what you it. see shooting rainbows at. <laughs> that that is there. it. That is the Matt Ambrosia team. Team <laughs> logo. What are the chances uh, he's watching right now? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero. 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 Oh, Zero. less than zero would be another good movie from for movie night. <laughs> that one. I, that one I've seen. <laughs> All right. Good. Sorry. So just keeping it moving. We are going to because of Crowdcast because of these issues. We are going to move fodder to Twitch and make it free for the entire audience to watch. Uh, but if you don't want to watch it or you're not available to watch it and you just want to. Uh, sorry, I should just say, because Twitch gets rid of that delay. So we can interact with chat live, which is going to be great. And then if you can't watch it live, or you can't watch live streams or the time of day doesn't work for you. We are going to release the audio on our all new premium audio tier, $10 audio. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to change your RSS feed. It's going to come in the same feed where you get Raiders, where you get Legacy. Uh, it's just going to drop right there. So you don't have to change anything as long as you are $10 you will get FOD uh, audio in your in your inbox. And I think that that is going to both give people audio that uh, are willing to join that tier and help us get some of those $5 people to $10 because that's really what, you know, helps us advance our business. And that's, that's kind of the whole point behind this change. But also it allows uh, even those that aren't able to, especially during COVID, uh, to even join Patreon to talk back with us on fodder. So I think it's a best of both worlds kind of thing. And I'm really happy about this particular evolution of the thought yeah getting five dollars subscribers to 10 is enormous i mean we have ten thousand subscribers we average around seven dollars um and as we talk more with patreon and we study other people's patreons we see that a lot of people do multiple tiers of audio and it's something we we really thought about for a long time there was a time when we considered switching the five dollar tier to seven just to like help us because we need we need to charge more for our content but we didn't want to do that we didn't want to like what are you going to grandfather everybody else in and start charging all the new people seven 
seven. Sounds like a pain in the ass. So offering two tiers of content is uh, an exciting compromise because now you have the choice. You can stay at five and you're going to get Legacy. You're going to get Raiders. You're going to get all the shows that you know and love at five. Um, you move to 10, you're going to start getting some new and exciting stuff uh, like Cannon Fodder and then New Game Who Dis Live, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, and other stuff as well. We've talked about possibly, you know, uh, putting ad-free versions of our shows on uh, on the $10 uh, subscription tier as well. Everything's on the table. Right now, Cannon Fodder Audio will definitely be there uh, once we hit uh, 71,000. Uh, moving right along here, I can keep this pretty simple. We're Obviously, only going to do two more. We're only going to do two more right now, and we're going to get back in the game. I'm going to jump right in. Uh, the next thing we said is a uh, D&D 5e one-off. We gave it a shot when we started New Game Who Dis. And it was, when I say we gave it a shot, I read a tiny little bit. No one else read anything. We made characters. We stumbled through an encounter. We didn't know what we were doing. And we made fun of it, but I think we gave it a fair shot. Uh, we didn't really give a fair shot to the rules. We gave a fair shot to the experience. We want to play it for real. We're not interested in being a, a 5e network. We enjoy Pathfinder. We enjoy the new games that we're playing in New Game Who Dis, the Delta Greens, these stacks of books we have on our shelves of other games we want to play. But the simple matter is uh, 5e has a large audience, and so it's an audience we'd like to tap into. So one of the things we're going to do is one night live with a GM who knows 5e, who can really uh, teach us how to play it and play it for real and, and hopefully get some of that crossover audience uh, into the rest of our uh, content. Because I think if they see what we do and then start listening to Pathfinder, even if Pathfinder's not their jam, we're going to help uh, grow the niche and grow our audience. Uh, and then last but last not least for right now, New Game Who Dis live with guests. New Game Who Dis is a sporadical show. We just finished a Delta Green series uh, with 10 episodes of Delta Green. Now uh, New Game Who Dis is on a hiatus. It'll come back with something else. Uh, but eventually, once we hit this uh, goal on Patreon, we're going to do it live with guests. And one guest that I talked to uh, that was very interested in uh, being a part of this is uh, someone by the name of Eleanor DiLorenzo uh, to be on a uh, Tales from the Loop new game, Who Dis, run by Matthew Capitacasa. So yes! just to name yeah. one possible guest and Matthew GMing live on Twitch, what? Uh, I mean, a lot of exciting things we can do uh, with new game, Who Dis. And really what the what the main thing that we're excited about is, is bringing on other people in this industry because we are just not connected to the other movers and shakers and we want to be movers and shakers so that's what new game who Dis is going to become uh oh, joe and, once again uh, you forgot to mention the, the our 5e gm the 5e gm who we know oh we're, we're, we're we know and yes we, we locked her down we locked her down she's booked Tell ladies and gentlemen joe. we are going to have this game run for us once we get to what was it again Grant, show that graphic. <laughs> Seventy <laughs> something. Once we get to our one-off goal, the 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 five e one-off goal, it is us playing a game run by a proper five e GM, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Richmond, who knows five e like the back of her hand. Not so much a Pathfinder woman is she, so she loves five e, has GM'd a lot of five e, and uh, I, w I can't wait to play a game with us playing. For Anne, I think oh, we're gonna she, give her it's just going to be a time. freaking blast. She's yeah. going to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be blessed for us. I didn't say it was going to be fun for Anne. I was like, <laughs> historically, be fun for us. historically, when uh, other GMs cough, cough, Jason Bowman run games for us, they don't uh, tend to like us very much. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I think he said he has said the phrase, I hate all of you. Like at least <laughs> numerous <a> times <laughs> every numerous time we times. play. <laughs> One night only, Anne Richmond GMing us through 5e. Oh, what a, <laughs> so what a disaster. Exciting. That's going to be uh, great. Uh, all right. Before we get back to the show, I just want to real quick update everybody on the giveaways tonight. Uh, Delta or Delta Green. Uh, uh, Norse Foundry dice. Uh, beautiful set of aluminum dice with our GCP logo uh, imprinted on them. You're going to see that tonight. Uh, we'll announce the winner at 10 o'clock. All you got to do, if you're watching now and you haven't done it already, take a screenshot of the stream, post it on your Instagram story, and tag at the glass cannon. We're going to tally those up. Uh, we got somebody working on it who's off stream so we can focus on the game. And we're going to get uh, a winner randomly sent to us and, uh, and announce it at 10 o'clock. Also, there's trivia going on as well uh, on our story. Go to our story. Answer that Strange Ann's trivia question correctly. 
And uh, you will be entered in to win a Tom Exposition Auto Body Koozie, which we will also announce at 10 o'clock. Done and done. done. The, new tr- the new trivia question is, uh, what's the name of Joe's shitty orc who died in the first combat of the AP? <laughs> Let me just read you an answer, an answer we got from Joshua Brandt just now. Doesn't matter what its name was. It was shitty. Good riddance. <laughs> That vomit guy. emoji. <laughs> he, should, he should be entered to win. Vomit emoji? He should vomit really be entered to win. I think we can accept that as a correct. No. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's get back to business. I'm not going to play through the whole travel back to uh, the chapel. Uh, after you oh, leave, uh, old Bitey Johnson, Mark Johnson, as it were, you make your way back unmolested. <laughs> you get to the chapel. I'm not even going to walk through this role play. I, I imagine you just kind of catch her up on what's going on. You tell her, there's another group. If they know about you, it's going to be bad news. As a guy, we thought he was a doctor. He's not a doctor. Ghouls. Lay low. We, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to do for her, for her before you rest again? In the um, safety of the chapel. You know she's a, a sister. She's probably got a, she, some healing. She's a well, cleric. I mean, if we're resting again, I got to roll another save. You well, sure well, do. We can ask her if she has any ability to cure disease. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I um, can provide uh, lesser restoration should you take any ability damage um but i can only do it once a day so i could do it now um Uh, uh, actually you know what i did it earlier on uh tom over here um we speak to the night before and this conversation takes place the night before and in the morning she's prepared fresh for us Fair enough. Uh, Tom really needed a fresh hit than tomorrow morning, but all right, I can do it twice. Yeah, I actually, uh, I already have some dex and con damage from, I guess, when this when I first got sick. Yes. Does anybody else have any damage? Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, uh, don't forget, we all healed one last night. Even though if you had nightmares or whatever, you still healed oh, one right. point for uh, on all your ability scores. That leaves me at one con and one dex damage, which. I'm fine with. I don't need any healing for that because a it doesn't affect me mechanically, and b I should heal it if we rest here tonight anyway. Me so, too. Actually, uh, yeah. So if you're down to one, you don't need a magical spell for that. You don't need magic. You just need sleep. And we're six dollars <laughs> away from uh, employee lounge movie night. Just saying. Oh my god. Oh, six bucks. It's hot. Oh my that's god. That's actually going to happen. That's going to happen <laughs> probably. Look uh, your calendar, good. Matthew. No, nope, wait, I'm get sorry. Get your popcorn We're, ready. I'm $2 sorry. away. $2 away now. <laughs> $2 uh, away. Yeah, get yeah, your yeah, popcorn yeah. ready, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to watch. Gonna uh, We're going to do a Yahoo Serious Film Festival to celebrate. <laughs> That's what you remind me of. I'm today. sorry. Uh, I, I was lying. Em- Employee Lounge Movie Night is happening. We're $6 what? over. We have hit our goal of $70,000 a month because of you guys. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. Unbelievable. You guys are the best. Wow. Uh, okay. Wow. All right. The mo- All right. the march to Cannon Fighter Audio begins. Um, All right, now let's give them what they came for and uh, and get out of this place. Start well, partying. Can anyone do you treat do this restoration before you uh, before you uh, go to sleep and then when you wake up again? I actually don't need the restoration. Joe points, okay. points out that we healed some and we'll heal again. So I'm fine. But I do need to roll to, to uh, a save on the ghoul fever and would appreciate a little treat disease. All right, uh, and what is that, DC 15? Yeah. All right, so uh, you all, none of you have nightmares. You're safe within the confines of this chapel, protected by perhaps Phrasma, perhaps one of the many other deities, because all along the wall, there's little mini shrines to almost every deity. Um, but you wake up, and you got to roll these safe. So you said DC 15? Yeah. Uh, Natty 19, you get her aid. Okay. I'm in a better position because my con is up. Con. Okay, Natty sixteen <laughs> for so that with with the treat disease that could be a twenty two. You will not be turning into a ghoul. Excellent. This time. Oh, that's a load off. That's a load uh, off my shoulders. Do you want to? <laughs> she can do the same thing to try and give Aldo help against the fifth fever. She fails on that. Can anyone else try? So I'm try sorry, I expended all my energy on this old lady. Oh, Natty nineteen. I, I, oh, this nice. is a lady is able to treat Aldo's. All right, so you get a plus foe. Okay. Uh, That's a 15. 15? You are right. You are not filthy no more. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, well, this is so great, man. Yeah, this is. Oh, this, this was a good stop. Like, good I stop. mean, seriously, winter's bed and breakfast is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We should have been coming here all along. Uh, <laughs> and you realize, though, like you, you got out, no problem now. But if you keep leaving and coming back, keep leaving and coming oh. back, it's going to get more suspicious. You do realize that you could put them in danger. Uh, but what's one trip? I was looking over my notes at the break, and it, part of his prophecy, Zandalus' prophecy, was that they would destroy them, right? Destroy this, these this survivors? Yeah. I, I, you take really good notes. I don't want to confirm nor deny that. Sorry, what did you say, Grant? I was distracted for a second. Uh, you say? Hold on, let me find my notes that I have in here. We have 130 in two episodes ago, I wrote down a note that said Zandalus's prophecy would lead his followers to kill Winter's people if they knew the secret that they existed. Maybe it's not his prophecy, but maybe it's just the intent that they would. Yeah, that's I think we, that's, what, that's kind of this vibe you were getting when you met yeah, the apostles. Yeah, yeah. So we had to just lie to them about why we were going down here, but whatever. We tell them about the danger. We tell them, lay low, don't send anybody north. We're working on getting to uh zandalus we've found we think a way to get to him and that should get us all out of here if we can uh i don't know turn him or kill him yeah all right so so, so you wake rest? up refreshed yes preparing yes. spells refreshed preparing full spells. hp all your abilities your spells your daily powers they're back you're fresh you're feeling yes. good yeah, have a, a nice sleep without a fucking nightmare that we wake up with bite marks on your body. But you know the dangers that lie ahead deeper in the asylum. What do you want to do? Want to head back? Yeah, let's head back yeah. to the ghoul room and go through those double doors. Yep. Yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, All right. baby. Did you guys ever... Uh, yeah, you did leave the map. All right, so let's go back to the hallway. Um, how did you get in here? Oh, because the wall collapsed, right? That's how you entered in. All right, so yeah, put yourselves back in the ghoul room for right now. I'll help you. Okay. So, set of double doors leading to the west. You can see... Through this, is there a door there? Yeah, that's where the door is. Okay, that's what it was. See that door there? Uh, so when you come, obviously this debris had covered all here, but when you come back down this hallway, uh, I can show you more of what's going on. So let's put you actually in the hallway. Because you remember you came through here and the wall collapsed and these ghouls came out and attacked you. So from here, you see the following. Come on, you piece of shit. <laughs> okay. You see that the hallway extends all the way down. Totally it goes worth it. Up to the north, and there's two uh, sets of doors, a set of double doors and a single door leading to the south. There's also uh, a hallway leading to the south that has double doors that lead into uh, a room that you can already see uh, is empty. Isn't it funny now, looking back, must have been... If it wasn't L.A., the first show is episode two, where you guys were right here um, on the other side of this rock pile. Yeah. And yeah. now look yeah, how that's right. far you've come. This is where that <laughs> viscera came out and, like, attacked Alster and tried to trip him. Um, but now you've made it full circle, and you still can't pass that rock. Um, but, yeah, hallway leading to the north, hallway leading to the south, uh, and then two sets of doors. What do you do? Mrs. O'Lady will peek around this corner, this, this, this hallway leading to the north to see what's going on there. Give a, a gentleman's peek, an old lady's peek. <laughs> an old lady's peek. And you see a couple of things. You see the another hallway that ends in a single door, and you see stairs leading up. Oh. oh, there's a very, very northwest, Mrs. O'Lady. It I doesn't agree. get more northwest than that. Actually, there is one door to the north. There is one door to the north. Why don't we? Why don't we open the door to the north and see what's going on? Excellent idea, Halster. Halster, 
Um, what? What was? What is it you want me to do? O- open a door? Open, open the door. Listen uh, at it first, oh, and then I'm, open it. I'm a bit. Um, even though it was a good, I'm a, uh, okay. I'll do it. And how <laughs> reluctantly walks up to the door to open it. Sort of from afar, I'll do a perception for traps. Ooh, 19. Perception for traps. It does not appear to be trapped. Okay. You open up the room. Very interesting room. I'm so excited. This is so much fun. You see a row of wicker chairs... Uh, wicker like rocking chairs facing the tall windows in this room very high ceilings so you imagine this is where uh, patients would just sit and stare into the distance off the edge of the island and these windows just stare straight into mist that's just licking the outside of the glass there's a heap of broken planks lying in one corner of the room it's a huge room and the wreckage of a wooden stairwell that still partially clings to the tower above. <gasps> oh, this is it. Oh, it's the tower stair. However, you also see three patients in tattered gowns circling the room. <sighs> their, no- their noses held high, sniffing the air, and their tongues kind of licking to taste like they're looking for something. However, now that you look at them, their tongues are long and forked oh. as it's three ghouls. Oh, more, uh, ghouls. more ghouls. The door opens and they turn to you dressed oh, in these tattered on. robes. Roll for initiative. Oh, come oh. On. Out of town. More ghouls, come on. No, <laughs> it's, it's a ghoul fight. Let me show it's, you this. Uh, it's, it's another ghoul fight. Oh. God, go. rolling rock. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, Atticus is hot tonight. <laughs> this is the fastest I've ever revealed a room. Wow. Uh, all it's right, I got to roll. I got to roll my Johnskis. Good reveal. You're all right, LaRusso. Um, okay, ghouls. Now, you guys had trouble with ghouls early on, and then you kind of got in your ghoul groove. Um It'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Just give me 45 minutes to find uh, this. I have so much on my fucking hero lab because I have <laughs> I all of Strange Aeons, <laughs> all of our side quest, side sesh. Uh, all right, just give me a hot second here. Talk amongst yourselves. Tell, tell me your hobbies. Tell about how everybody has purple lights. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, yeah, the whole right side of the screen here representing with, uh, or, or stage left, as oh, they here. call it. Hey, cool. I'll adjust. Purple spread. lights. I'll adjust. Yeah, don't adjust. I did blue the first half, so I wanted to shake it up for the second half. I mean, this, oh, you might, know what? Go, this might go terribly wrong. I was going to say, I could do a little red for combat. I, oh, there you go, Matthew. Getting it started. A little red on that one. Cool. You have multiple lights? Nice. Yeah. Whoa! Ooh. <laughs> oh, blood red. Shagong, gong, gong, gong. Gong, 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 goo. <laughs> Uh, all right. uh, I'm ready. Me, okay. uh, talk to me, Atticus. Uh, 24. Ooh, doggy. 24. 15. 15. Misses out. 21. 21. Aldo. 18. 18. Hey, good. Good initiative. Yeah. Uh, all right. Round one, you see the size of this room. Uh, you see three of these uh, ghouls. Oh, wow, you guys' colors look really cool. Uh, <laughs> and they're just wandering the room. They all turn to look at you, and Atticus, you get to act first. Uh, Atticus is going to delay. Delay? See what does. Yeah, he's, he's clogging up the door way there, so I'm going to see what he does. Okay. Um, it's very good. It is then Mrs. O'Lady's turn. Uh, okay. Didn't expect that, but uh, you know what? We can make it work. Because Mrs. O'Lady <laughs> will step up uh, behind Halster, diagonally behind Halster, and look towards through the door towards this ghoul in the front here. And uh, I will need that ghoul to please roll a will sit. Oh, man, that's a good... You got a good, nice little angle there. Uh, and the light just hits it enough for you to see it. Uh, you said will save? Yes, please. 
All right. Uh, well done, House Houston, on the light. Well done. Ooh, 21. Okay, you pass. Uh, so you take five <laughs> five points of damage from a mind thrust. Oh, from a fucking nice. mind thrust. Five points of damage. <laughs> it reels reaches back. It reaches out through the psychic space to find now, make contact with his mind and squeeze. It's immune to mind affecting effects. Yeah, would that so, be considered a mind affecting effect? Uh, yes. I thought we. Th- I, I thought I remember doing this on a ghoul last time. All right, never mind. Then I will take those five hitch points back. Yes, but you should. I think we all learned something about yes. ghouls' minds, and that's really uh, what this is all about. Do you want to move it all like into the room? I already moved to get that that get that sleek angle. Just thought I'd ask. Uh, it's Aldo's turn. Atticus, you're still on the table. Aldo is going to step up behind his best friend, Halster Price. And actually, can he hit from that angle? Could he hit that first goal in the room from, from there? Would he have to move up one? Um, yeah, I think be throw like ranged around a corner, you're going to want to get in the room. <laughs> okay. All right. So he steps around the corner flipping. through the door. <laughs> and is it a fire in the hull? And he tosses a bomb at the Come first goal. Directly Come on, get at him. him. That is a 16 against touch AC. That is a hit. And that is 11 points of fire damage. To the goal. 11 Ooh, points of baby. fire damage. Jeepers. Now please, someone come in here and protect me. Although I want to <laughs> yeah, get Al- sick again. Aldo has left himself uh, wide open. And it is their turn. Oh, shit. I was hoping Halster could go. Um, let's see what kind of movement they have here. This actually... This is tough. That one can make it with ease. That one can make it. The one in the back cannot. So, uh, this they both uh, these front guys both converge on uh, Aldo and go for a bite. Ghoul bite. If you're following along at home, ghoul bites have the possibility of doing both paralysis and ghoul fever. Uh, let's see here. <sighs> Natty 19 on the Shit. first one. So the first one, you take no. three points of damage. Now let's roll against paralysis to start. Okay. Fortitude McSaverson. All right. Uh, 13. 13. Let me see here. I got to bring up the. Uh, I, think, I think that's a pass. Is it? Wait, is it paralysis? Yeah, DC 13. Yeah, I think oh, it's a pass. Okay. Nice. All right. Thank now God. roll Ooh. against the ghoul Ooh. fever. Ooh. Another okay. fortitude save. Oh, come on, old 40. Don't let me down. 40. That's a 16. 16, you're all right. Yeah. Nice, nice all right. work, oh, dude. Very nice little damage. Work. Let's see if the other one hits and we have to do it all over again. I don't think so. That is going to be a 10 to hit. That's a miss. Oh so the other one comes up, just chomp and misses. And oh. Aldo is safe for the moment. Uh, but he is surrounded by ghouls, uh, yep. which makes it difficult for a ranged character. The guy in the back, uh, he is going to delay. He's going to just kind of bide his time and see where this goes. Um, Cheapers, though. Just thinking he double moved and blocked that door Aldo would be trapped in there you know what that's interesting let's do that oh so oh, this no. thing double moves up oh, and no. surrounds Aldo uh, bad news you just see this thing at the door just ah, 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 this tattered gown it is Halster's turn best friend no no and he swings out wildly at the <laughs> creature fair. in front of him uh, with a shoot. No, 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 not a bad, not a good time for this. Uh, tw- uh, eight, 11 to hit. 11 misses. Wow. Just, oh, you hit the door jam. Oh. Great time for your worst roll in your entire career. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to attempt to move? Move into the room, provoke? I mean, I don't understand what that would really accomplish. Uh, the one in front of me is already no I don't like if you if, if, if it would help Aldo it would but I just think it would get me closer to being paralyzed um, yeah no it's bad this is bad yeah uh, um, let's just close the door and we'll move on <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what uh, Atticus is gonna need line of sight and uh, it'll be easier for him to shoot and Mrs. O'Lady to throw things at them so 
Emboldened by his new magical plus one large wooden shield, Halster takes a quick little five foot step, if he can that way. You cannot. Uh, not around a corner. Okay. Uh, then I will uh, take the five foot move. That's so a 10 foot move. 10 foot move. That you have to roll to move through a square. Ugh. What you have to roll acrobatics. No, I'm not going to do that. Negative. Yeah, you four really, she really jammed you up there, man. Yeah. All right, that's that's my turn then. That was okay. some really, really good tactical play by Mr. Lavalley. I don't often do it, but I was looking at it and I was like, <laughs> actually, this would be horrible for them. Um, okay. Uh, it comes right back around to the top of the next round, and Atticus, you haven't gone. You're still up. I know. I know. Still up top. Um, this is right. bad. You this have, is really bad. So I'm have gonna, real I'm gonna, feelings for Aldo. Once again, I'm going to pull out the stops. You know, I mean, I I sit here and I think so much about these cannon fodders where we were like, well, you see the what spellcasters have to do. <laughs> they have to save their spells for the important fights, and if you use them early, well, then that's on you. And I'm like, this is awful, the situation. So there's no way he's going to hold back at this point. And if I'm reading this right, I got you dead to rights. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and cast the spell Bone Shaker. Oh, on nice one. The I love first that spell. ghoul. On right, this guy so right there, the one the blocking one right the door. right in front of Halster. Now, we'll shake some bones. Now, here's the question. It is a fortitude save. However, it says a mindless undead creature doesn't receive a save against this effect. I just don't understand the difference between mindless and immune to mind affecting. Mm-hmm. Well, it's undead. So, it's... Not all undead are immune are mindless, to mind affecting, right? right? Uh, not all undead are mindless. Certainly a lich is not mindless, et cetera, et cetera. But maybe they're not immune to mind effect. Anyway, I'm asking you. Yeah. Do you think that this thing gets a save? Or do you think... Because I, I, it's not a mind control thing. Basically, right. I, I take control of its skeleton since it's undead. Uh, right. Uh, what, what you just said sounds like they don't get a save. Right. Yeah, not I don't think they it. do. I don't well, think they do. Well, here's the question, but, too. Do they have an intelligence score at all? That would they overwrite... Do. They do? Then they're not mindless. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so that, that that's so what I think it does me. get the save. But yeah, they're not so immune to it. The chat so is r- saying that ghouls do get a save. Yeah, so it's brutal. Yeah. So you're obviously gonna save and it's gonna be a waste of a second level spell. This is the game, man. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, I Maybe think not. Not. as, as was evidence in last night's suck. side quest side test, anything can happen. I am, I am. I am too hard on save a suck. Uh I will say yeah, I'm looking at you on the stream and you look like you're an extra in Moulin Rouge. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. That is, yes. Well, that was yes, what I was good. going for. Oh, shit. I forgot my gloves. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> before, he, before he went live, I said I asked Joe if his children had seen him like that. <laughs> this kid looks like an extra in Mulholland Drive with that background yeah. and that hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's the guy behind the dumpster. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> oh, oh there we go. Oh, it's <laughs> finally. Now do I look like an together. extra in Moulin Rouge, bitch? Did, did that get delivered during the first <laughs> two hours? I've been waiting for this. It was delivered by 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was what you were waiting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, that's just great. Well worth the wait. <laughs> this is extremely painful. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> All right. So, <laughs> what's the so save? So I right? am gonna. Uh, I will cast it. It's a fortitude save. The fortitude save. Okay. Let's get out. You know, I'm gonna get out my good die. I haven't rolled it tonight. I've been rolling okay. the green. Fortitude save. Fortitude save. Don't tell me what the DC is. I'm just going to give you my number. I'm going to make sure it's a nice, nice roll. Nice roll with these Norse Foundry dice. And, and by the way, we have a winner for tonight's contest. Why don't I just what? take a second oh and my announce God, the I winner. Oh, my God, I can't it's 10 o'clock. This is a set of uh, glass cannon Norse Foundry die. They roll hot. And the first winner on night one is... Julie 14. That's Julie uh, 14. At Jules hey. 410. Congratulations, oh, Julie! Yeah. All right, nice. congratulations. congratulations! Super fan person. of the show. Yeah, fantastic! Awesome. Good win. Let's see if uh, congratulations. 
your win will lend good ru- good luck to my role or to Joe's fate. Ooh, I think I might have got it. It's it's. I think it's close. You might laugh and be like, "Of course you passed." Seventeen. Yeah, you passed. So useless, completely ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> You're so Bullshit. mad with a rat face. <laughs> you look like an <laughs> angry secret of Nim character. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Joe, you really need to be harder on save or suck spells, I think. That's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, you uh, and fuck you, Grant, too. You try, you try him too often. You gotta... You gotta really realize they never work. Every time he just he goes right to the saver side. (laughs) That's his jamboree. Because the thing is, if they make the save, it just nothing happens. That's the thing. This is this is the whole bullshit. This is the whole bullshit that exists around this bullshit game that I have to play. Is like, (laughs) oh, Joe, we'll just do a character that you don't do the rolling. Uh, Other people do the rolling, and then you won't have such bad luck. Nope, hundred percent of the time. (laughs) Hundred percent of the time. Doesn't matter who's rolling. (laughs) Yep. And it's only going to get Skid's character killed. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady, you see Atticus reaches out and tries to, like, do something to this creature. The creature just... (laughs) Tattered gown, long uh, tongue, sharp fangs. Fangs that you felt on your own body that infected you with ghoul fever surrounding your good buddy Aldo. What do you do? This is a real sticky wicket. It Uh, truly is. Most of my spells are mind-affecting. Uh, I'm not really helpful in melee, and I do, and to, to, to shoot something into, into at range, I would be uh, taking a minus four to hit. So uh, how did we get this far? This is amazing to me. <laughs> I know. This point. It's, wow. Uh, well, you weren't fighting ghouls until you got really to this part of the the asylum. I they take back everything. I, every area. compliment I gave to book one of this awful adventure. <laughs> Four ghoul g- encounters back to back to back to back. This is stupid and unimaginative. Yeah, it's and fun I hate and it. interesting. And dealing with diseases is fun. That's super fun. You know, who doesn't love like dealing with a disease for several days on end as a character? Fucking blast, dude. Who doesn't love? Who doesn't love daily ability score damage? Oh my god, it's the best. It's the best. God, I just I love watching well, movies or people really dealing feel with the disease. Challenge. Yeah, it's so challenging. It's so difficult and annoying. Annoying is a good feature to have in a game, right? Oh man, I'm so into this right now. Are you guys are done? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. is it your turn? You You're gonna backflip into the room, move through a threatened square, yeah, an occupied you, square. You, you, yes, use your I sneak am. attack. Use your sneak attack. I don't have sneak attack. Oh wait, they're immune to precision devs. I'm just kidding. That said, Mrs. O'Lady is going to charge into the room, roll acrobatics to try to move through their square. Oh, oh no. Through my an God. enemy space. All right, so there's a couple things happen here. You're trying to move through an enemy space. Yep. But then you're also trying to move through a threatened area. So that's yep. two separate rolls. Uh, first, let's see if you get through this guy's space. That's going to be five plus their CMD. But I'm sure Mrs. O'Lady, spry as she is, has insane <laughs> acrobatics. I mean, no. But uh, why not give it a try? Why not any for, caps? The, for the marathon? I don't have any. I apparently have used my caps. I did read Joe's email. I just told him. <laughs> uh, all right. It's uh, hey, listen, nothing's impossible. It's Pathfinder, man. <laughs> Natural 18. Oh, ho, ho. for a 20. To get through. Oh, all Jesus. right. It was 19 you had to get to get oh, through. Uh, oh my God. So you tumble through that guy's space, but now the one to the north of him, you move through a threatened area, roll an, another one to see if he hits you. Okay. That first one is huge, man. Now the if first you get hit, you just, have to, you just have to roll the fortitude save. And you're and in the room, you're a new paralyzed. target for them besides just Aldo. Yeah, okay. which is huge. Uh, natural two. <laughs> so okay. Natural two. All right, so he'll go ahead and take uh, or attempt to take a bite out of you. That was the big one, though, getting that first crack die. Yeah, that, yeah, that was the one you wanted to pass. Yeah. Uh, 13. Miss. Yes. Beautiful. Miss. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. Because his, on the other one, his roll doesn't matter. If you would just stay, you would get kicked back out of the room. So that was right. a huge. That was, you know, I, you know, I don't believe in hero points, and when we start playing second edition at some point, I won't be using them. But uh, I do believe in bottle caps, and that was a heroic action. Give yourself a bottle cap. Oh, oh 
nice. That's a marathon cap right there. Marathon those cap. Are, those are rare. Marathon cap. Marathon, marathon cap. cap. Mar Grant, okay. throw up the marathon cap graphic. Okay, one second. Uh, take a look at the Twitch stream, Troy, and uh, it's live. Wait, no, oh, there it goes. <laughs> there it goes. I don't, Already. Oh, I don't, God. Uh, oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 that's so horrifying. horrifying. How are you guys seeing it in real time? Please, please stop it, Grant. Please yeah, stop yeah. it. Please stop wipe, it. Wipe that away. Oh, God. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn it, how are you guys seeing that? I'll uh, give it to you again, Troy. With a no, cue! Oh, God! <laughs> oh, no! It keeps getting worse! <laughs> alright, alright, alright. I take it back. So I really wasn't expecting the the yeah. other guy. Uh, so okay. How, what, Marathon what, cap. What speed? I move at half speed or quarter speed to do that? Half speed. Half speed. Half speed. Half speed. Okay, so my move action ends there. So Mrs. O'Lady will take a stabby stab with her sword cane at the ghoul in the front. Okay. You didn't do something before we started this, right? You didn't cast something or... No. You just moved, right? Okay. Moved. Stabby stab, okay. And you're Flank. flanking with Aldo. Got flanking. Uh, that is an 18 to hit. <gasps> oh! That is a hit, my friend. Like nice. That! And does... <laughs> Uh, I have my my damage on the sword cane is one d six minus one, and I rolled a one, so that is a single point of damage. Uh, single, geez. single point yeah. of damage. Uh, that's all right. Not you, her. You might have saved Aldo's life. Uh, wait, wait. Do you always do one damage? A yeah, minimum one damage, right? I don't. I'm not sure where I, you're getting that from. I, I thought most all rolls were were on damage were minimum one, but let me. Look pretty, pretty sure, it's, the cheater. Pretty sure it's a this guy. zero. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll look it up. Move along. It's only one point of damage. It's not like it did anything anyway. Rogue yeah, nine. Seen. Rogue nine says one non-lethal actually. Oh yeah. Oh. And that's backed we're up about by a few people. All right. The minimum non -lethal one non-lethal. On non which ghouls are immune to? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are the uh, best. Geez. Thanks for watching. Oh, uh, thank God. Thank God for all of them. How uh, right, has one of us died so far? Oh wait, one of us did. Well, did. this might be the night. I guarantee death this marathon weekend. Uh, it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, you are in a tough space, but you do see out of the corner of your eye, Mrs. O'Lady just cartwheel into the room past this ghoul blocking the door. Yeah. So I can't really, I obviously can't throw a bomb standing where I'm standing because I would incur three attacks of opportunity. So uh, one uh, of them took it. So you would, unless they have combat reflexes, you'd incur at least two. Either way, not oh, good. <laughs> right, right. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna t I'm gonna take one. Uh, Al is gonna take a five foot step back. Okay. So that he's between the wall and the westernmost ghoul. Okay. And he's just, just like take your best shot, mate. And he's gonna pull out a bomb and throw it at the rearmost ghoul to the. Diagonal. Yeah. Uh, okay. Love it. Which Mrs. means that O'Lady yeah. oh, and the one in the, f the door have a chance to take splash damage. But meanwhile, the one right to the north of you, as you make your ranged attack, takes a possible AOO. I don't know. Again, low chance to hit. But when they hit, there's a lot of other stuff going on. Yep. Uh, oh, Natty 19 again. Of course. Of course. Again with the Natty 19. This time of it's going to be five points of damage. Uh -uh. Skid, I'm going to need two fortitude saves great oh my Best god one of, of the these hands one of these could be down. paralyzed hands down <laughs> can't tell you the raw joy that i experienced <laughs> <laughs> it's almost worse it's almost worse than having a disease in real life <laughs> I, would, I would rather be troy for the last two weeks than even just have to make these two fortitude saves <laughs> i wouldn't wish that on anybody <laughs> uh All right, start natural with... one on the first one. Oh no and, no uh, 13 on the second one. So you don't have ghoul fever, but you are paralyzed. Oh my goodness. You're paralyzed for four rounds. See, Troy, you could at least move. You were bedridden, but you could at least move your arms. I can't even do that. <laughs> can't, can't do it. Oh, oh my God. goodness gracious. And thus he can't throw the bomb, which explodes in his square. Dealing full fire damage to him. <laughs> well, he would have never pulled it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Died. Oh, my <laughs> gracious. Holy shit. Holy shit. 
This is so bad, man. Dude, oh, these man. ghouls. This is nuts. It is the ghoul's turn. One of them will do a full attack on Mrs. O'Lady. Which one? The one right next the to one, Halster, I assume. The one to the north. <laughs> uh, crack die. Natty 18. This is the bite to start with Mrs. O'Lady. Uh, four points of damage. All right. I need you to roll two fortitude saves. First right. one against paralysis. First one. Uh, 17. Not paralyzed. Second one against ghoul fever. Okay. 14. You're all right. No ghoul fever. Okay. okay. Now, two claws, each of which have the ability to paralyze you. Oh, my God. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Claw number one. 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Four points of damage. Oh. Roll as fortitude save against paralysis. 17. Next claw. I mean, the chance... I'm rolling 18, 17, 19. I mean, you're going to hit every time. Uh, no, 12. Okay, that's second misses. claw. Okay. My AC isn't particularly strong. The one right next to you goes to attack Halster through the door. First, the bite. 18 to hit. Miss. Thanks to this oh. new shield. Oh. Knocks away wow. the bite. Teeth wow. Teeth chattering off of it. Claw, number one. 19. Miss. Thanks to the shield. Oh. Wow. wow. Man, I have to roll through the roof then with the final claw. And I didn't. 14. Oh, nice work, Halster. Nice. Oh, oh, I can let out a, a breath. Couldn't the breathe. Ghoul in the back next to Aldo. Skid, I love you like a brother. But we got a marathon. That means everything's off the table. I know I always mispronounce it, so help me if I get it wrong. Why did I bother? Why did I bother writing that entire fucking backstory scene? It's that we're gonna never come gonna get out. To it's it. gonna come no, out. No, why he's come dead? Out. He's gonna be fucking dead. <laughs> it's in the can. You're not, no one's ever gonna see it. Thank Troy, everybody. I wrote this amazing backstory scene. It's, it's coming big reveal. out. It was it's almost still... whole deal. Where he was from, everything else. It's You're never gonna, gonna fucking out. see it because of it's Troy. It's still gonna come out. <laughs> Send your cards and letties. <laughs> it's still gonna come out, and it's the best part of the whole weekend. Don't let this take away from that moment. The fact that he's dead and it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Don't oh, yeah. That, no, take that, away. One, that doesn't sap any kind of joy out of it. <laughs> Don't forget. Just as special. Like they always say, remember the Alamo. Alamo. Remember the Umlo skid. Remember the Umlo. Something better always happens. The ghoul does a coup de gras or attempts oh, to do a coup de gras God. on smart, Aldo smart Casimir. Ghoul. Really clever ghoul there. Uh, uh, this is going to be an automatic crit. Yep. Uh, These ghouls are really it's not smart. an aimed they ghoul. To do this stuff. Uh, so you will take very low damage three, four, five points of damage. Okay? Now, you need to make a fortitude save, which is DC. Is it 15 plus the damage or 10 plus the damage? This is very important for you to know, and I'm not <laughs> yeah. looking it up for you. That's fair. Uh, I'm looking I it think up. It's, I think it's 10. I think it's 10 plus the damage taken. Okay. There is a bottle cap out. Just uh, let me see here. I'm going to throw up. Automatically score crit. Did that. 10 plus the damage dealt. So it's fortitude DC 15 to stay alive. Uh, and I anybody want to do cap. anything? Oh, and we got a you. cap in there. Okay. Roll twice. Take the higher. Can, can you do two caps? No. Okay, I rolled a 13 and a 15. <gasps> you do not immediately die. Oh my God. Thank you, Matthew. You're but this welcome. will just happen again next round. We gotta yeah, fix this. this. <laughs> Can Aldo's... we get the backstory scene in now between the next combat round? <laughs> <laughs> <He's still alive. laughs> 
This thing just comes down with all of its might to try and take out the helpless uh, Aldo and does not succeed. Oh, lady, you see this. You know that was a killing blow on deck. A lot needs to happen in this next round and everyone except Aldo gets to go before they get to go. Halster, you are up. I got to clear a path for for everyone else to get through. Um, I feel sick in my stomach. Oh my God. Uh, I'm hoping that Mrs. O'Lady and Atticus, or Mrs. O'Lady in particular on that side, will be able to distract the ghoul in front of Aldo somehow because I don't want to get paralyzed on top of it and then we're totally screwed because I think I'm the only one that could do damage to these things outside of Aldo who is also paralyzed. Oh, I'm going to hope that I take out this ghoul in front of me. I think you're muted again, Graham. Uh, there was a lot of hemming and humming and hawing. Uh, there's a reason why most of the time the technical director on a broadcast is also not a participant in said broadcast. Uh, so uh, that will not happen tomorrow night because when the stream continues, because I will have a membrane keyboard in front of me. Uh, Halster doesn't want to get into a position where he is paralyzed because uh, it, it could lead to total bedlam and everyone dead because only Aldo and I are doing any damage to anyone. So he's going to hope that he can help clear a path towards this person and that Mrs. O'Lady can distract the ghoul accosting Aldo. Here's the strike. 20. I think I heard a slight Atticus cut in there, but anyway, go on. <laughs> it was a slight, though. You gotta admit, it was slight. <laughs> a little one. It was slight. Uh, when Grant goes into detail about his turn, it's always a little slight at the others, plus here's what just, you should I just, do. I just wonder even why we rested at the chapel to get Joe's spellbook filled up if his spells are useless, and they save or suck. Who would ever cast a spell like that? Who would Is that ever? Canzoni, O'Brien? <laughs> Dude. I like I haven't had one of these in like probably two years, and I saw you have them like a month ago, and I would like I've been yeah. Jones it, so I picked some up today. It's the last time I drank. Uh, Twenty two to hit is a hit, correct? Twenty two to hit the guy right in front of you is a hit. Here it comes. Come on, man! One shot kill. Minimum damage. Six oh. points of damage. Oh boy! It's not oh, gonna great. cut it, dude. Great. It's not gonna oh. cut it. Great. Oh God! Oh no! Oh no! Do you move at all? No, right? I even I can't move in this armor very well. I would just get paralyzed, and then we'd both be dead. So I'm yeah. hoping for a miracle yeah. from someone else. I tell you right now, these guys have a plus three to hit. I've just been rolling rocks. Think about it too. That DC for the coup de gras was the damage. I rolled shit damage. Five points of damage on 2d6 plus two. Uh, do, you, uh, do I get a sense though, based off of fighting some ghouls, that if I were to move into this square between uh, uh, Aldo and uh, then I'd have to take two, almost two attacks. The odds of me getting paralyzed are huge. But I want to help him so much. Yeah, it's tough. Intelligent creatures uh, would play probably as tactically sound as you would. You want to eliminate one enemy if you can. Um, All right. Top of the next round. Atticus Grimm. I was not expecting this kind of tension on night one of a marathon. I I am appalled that you thought we were going to finish this book. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just appalled. Like you would oh, think well, after no five years, you would know. We'll we'll finish. No way. Um, let me just get this fucking backstory out without having to cry during it. That's all I want. <laughs> uh, damn. You know, I really want to help, but wait a minute. I can do this. I can do this. All right. Okay. Atticus is going to move up to the right of Halster. So he's right catty corner to the door. Catty corner to a ghoul that stands on the other side of the door. Uh Uh-huh. However, with that edge of the wall right there, there is cover. There is some cover supplied. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, the question is, Troy, can I get to the corner, the top corner of Halster Square here? Can I get some line of sight? Yeah, I'm fine with that. There's enough light in the room. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you some benefits of the doubt here. This is okay. dire, dire circumstances. Okay, so uh, in that case, he is going to mutter an incantation. His amulet glows with power. His arcane bonded object 
And uh, I'm going to cast, going across the front of Aldo, a wall of ice that oh. blocks off the creature from seeing Aldo at all. It just goes up between the two of them. <laughs> oh, cool. How uh, how big is it? Is it 10 feet long? Five, just no, in it's front? just... It, yeah, is it, it like just, exactly what uh, Grant did last night, pretty much? <laughs> like just a, a five-foot ice wall like that? No, no, no. It's 10 feet, so it would have to be to the left or to the right. Uh, we can make it to the right, and uh, and it reaches up 10 feet. Wow. Nice. That... Uh, that means no coup de gras next round. Yeah. Uh, grass, all right, bro. coup de gras. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You're just placing a nice wall. You can see those those squares. You certainly can see this square here. Um, so very good. And you move to get in position. It's Aldo's turn. Aldo now has th- three rounds of paralysis left. And now it's the ghoul's turn. And now they're mad. The one uh, to the north here goes after Mrs. O'Lady again Wait, with a full. The, I haven't gone since they attacked me. They took a full round action to attack me. Oh, I'm sorry. Atticus just went. It's O'Lady. Then it's Aldo. Then it's them. Sorry, got excited. Uh, big, yeah, big turn here for all, old lady, because you're still standing next to two of these things. They could paralyze you, and you could be next on the chopping block. Okay, Mrs. O'Lady is going to take a five foot step to the northwest. And then she is going to do a telekinetic projectile on the ghoul that's attacking Aldo. Uh, Five foot step projectile to the one that's attacking Aldo. Okay. That one has yet to be hit. And she's going to uh, do so with a a flurry of insults. Oh. Uh, Unheard of. Such as? Such as. You brute! And oh, no! And <laughs> you, God. you, you seem di- ridden with disease. That's Over cold. Here. I'm sure That's that cold, provides lady. Aldo with infinite comfort in his paralyzed state. Yeah. To hear that enter his ears. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm even... still aware, and I'm like, wow. I don't know how the ghoul is going to survive that <laughs> withering That's... attack on his, on his, on his self-esteem. Mindless. It's good that he. I'll say mindless. This took some burn damage. Okay, I'm just gonna roll it. Uh, Natty 19. Yes. Uh, okay, so that is uh, one point of damage from a uh, little piece of rubble that hits him in the head and just. Why don't you pick on someone who is actually hurting you? <laughs> <laughs> you nice. mindless, mind this person. Yeah. You, you <laughs> immune to mind affecting, mindful person. Piece of shit game. <laughs> <laughs> how can they have a? How can they think and be mindless? Right? It how doesn't can they make have all their memories? Sense. How can they know? Uh, what's his name from that was chained to the wall really well, but be immune to mind? If but have no mind. To, Does anyone with, have any effect? kryptonite? Uh, they're, they're impervious to everything. We need to try everything we can. They're super ghouls. I, I have a matter to discuss with you over here, sir. <laughs> This guy takes a five foot step and unleashes a full attack on old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that coming. Yep. Here comes the bite. Uh, He's friends with 11 that other guy. misses on the bite. Claw number one, five. Here come the low rolls. Claw number two, ten. Excuse me, eight. Oh. I rolled a three and a five on the claws, so miss, miss, miss. The one, oh man, this is rough now, because if this one paralyzes Halster, you got a paralyzed Halster right in front of the door. Hold uh, your shield let's high, friend. Start with the bite. Uh, miss on the bite with a six. Claw number one. That mu- Oh no, 19 doesn't miss. hit, right? Nope. Miss on the 19. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Big money, big money, big come money. Come on, come on. And an 18 on the second yes. claw. There we go. Both of those would have hit. We're oh, turning it God. around. We're turning it around. You know, come on. Real, first you banned you hero points. Shield. First you banned hero points. Next he's going to ban magical <laughs> items to be picked up in a dungeon. I'm Everybody sure. stay <laughs> shop. Stay oh shop. Uh, the one uh, that was going after uh, Aldo uh, sees the wall there. And... 
The one I antagonized, you mean? The one you antagonized. <laughs> with uh, some really, I have to say, harsh words. Yeah, and you hit him in the head with something. He didn't like that. So he's going to slide over to you and try and take a bite. Dice out of the box, Grant Burger style, and an eight on the bite. He misses. Oh, ho, ho, ho. A small opportunity here. Aldo still has three rounds of paralysis yet left, and he hasn't got. They haven't got any. Uh, the rest of you. If you all end up paralyzed, good night. It's over. We'll start tomorrow with new characters. But in the meantime, it is Halster's turn. Halster, big turn. You oh, know it. I don't please. have to tell you. He reaches out to the Lady of Graves in his mind, saying, please allow me to send these towards your spiral. Swings out natural 19, that is a critical threat. Yes! Come on, yes! come on, come on. Close, yes! close, 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 close that deal. Threat. To confirm, Finish to him. confirm. Finish him. 19 to confirm. 19 to confirm, that is a confirmed crit. Yes! Oh, yes. <laughs> oh my god, phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my god. There's the grand role we know and love. <laughs> yes, finally! Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry to keep you in suspense. That's uh that's gonna be a fan critical. Oh man, I did not have it ready. Okay. Forgot we're doing <laughs> fan critical. Okay. See, it's fan just like the live critical. shows. <laughs> it's it's exactly. Live experience. <laughs> the, the true live experience. Uh okay, this one from Dave in Montgomery City, Missouri. Drove through Missouri twice this summer. Uh, you know what? Bottle cap. What? That's what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. The description of your attack is so amazing that everyone around you is moved to stand up and applaud. Double damage and you get a bottle cap. Oh, <laughs> holy shit, that's awesome. Wow. Wait, what was the, I heard the second part. What was the first part? It was the description of your attack is so amazing that everyone around you is moved to stand up and applaud. Double damage and bottle cap. That's, that's amazing. That's great. That's Grant a, gets that's a, a bottle great cap. Crit. I just love the title. You know what? Bottle cap. I love it. That's just fun. <laughs> great job. That's really that is great, good. Great uh, job. Double so damage and you get a cap. That's a great. That now that's a great crit. Yeah. That is a great crit. Uh, yeah. All right, roll that double damage. Is so it going to be my, enough to take one of these goals out? My times two is simply a times two. So here it comes. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, fifteen points of damage. Come I'm on, sorry. that has to kill. No, him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Seventeen points of damage. That's. Yeah. I already said it was one dead ghoul. Uh, oh, nice. Yes! Yes! <laughs> little boy, little mate. Little and the doorway boy. is now nice clear. Nice. Alistair kicks at the dead body as he re steps in to uh, to immediately threaten the uh, one of the ghouls threatening Mrs. O'Lady. And that is his turn. Wow. Halster wow. has entered the building. Happy Jackie Robinson Day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, yeah, you he answered everything. That's right. I'm, all, I'm all thrown off now. It's the top of a new round, and there is life in this party yet again. Uh, but you're not out of the woods, especially Mrs. O'Lady, because if one of them paralyzes, the other one can coup de grace. Uh, you know you got to finish this off. Atticus, you're up. Um, yeah, I'm just. That is exactly the problem I'm looking at right now. It's like, how do you deal with the two that are on top of Mrs. O'Lady? Um, it's tough. It's a puzzle. Yeah, that one-two punch of the paralyzing coup de gras is really brutal. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, Matthew, any suggestions? Save me. <laughs> Save me. Yeah, it's so hard to get in there. I mean, I got. I, I don't have acrobatics to beat that shit, and I'll just get paralyzed. Um, I'm gonna try to give us our our best chance. Uh, sorry, Mrs. O'Lady, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to reach out and touch Halster and vanish him from existence. Ooh. So he disappears. Not from nice. existence, I hope. Oh, yes. No, not from existence. From existence. As far as the ghouls are concerned. Wait, I'm not um, willing. Halster is vanished. Do you want to move at all, or did you move to do that? Uh, I five foot stepped, uh, okay, and then 
Yeah, I just don't... I don't want to provoke and paralyze myself. I think that that would be really stupid. So, uh, I'm going to stay where I am for the moment. And this creature can now see me clear as day. You know, right right through here. And um, Atticus gives him the finger. Nice. Okay. For what it's worth. Sure, sure. Uh, big turn, Mrs. O'Lady. Big, big turn. Because then it's Aldo, who's paralyzed. And then it's the two of them. What are you thinking? Can I, can I say something? A lot. Not you too, Matthew. Can I advise you in one small, small respect? Uh, as my counsel, I, I'd like to take a moment to speak with my counsel. <laughs> Cover up the microphone. Please. <laughs> I don't want to give unsolicited <laughs> advice, but if I'm not crazy, uh, I, you, you, you could full withdraw, I think. Yes. And at least avoid the paralyze and, and, and coup de gras for a round. Yes, uh, that w- I have two options on. The- I have two options a- ahead of- in front of me right now. Uh, I could full withdraw. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a little afraid of where that would leave Aldo because they can get to him all around the, co- the corner of this wall, and they don't see Halster there. Um, That's very selfless see. thinking. Yeah. Yeah, but the coup, but they can't coup de gras in one round. So there's a little time, and Halster is invisible. Can so you, can you take a five foot step and do a full round action? Yes, but I, they're not a five foot step away yet. Well, they might, they could be. Um, oh yeah, from your full withdrawal for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's why you have to full withdraw rather than five foot step if that's your objective. Well, I was thinking I could five foot step and and keep them. <laughs> so it's good screen. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. O'Lady is going to take a five foot step and then do a telekinetic projectile on the n- the northern ghoul. Okay. Uh, okay. That one's not taking any damage. That makes me think of Southern Man. Northern ghoul. And I will miss. Well, I uh, I have, it's a ten to hit. That is a miss. Aldo, you have two rounds of paralysis left. And it's the ghoul's turn. Ghoul number one takes a five foot step and this unleashes a lady. three we, we Wishing attacks. for death? Come First on. First attack is the bite. Come Anything on. could happen. 12. Okay. Yes. Okay. Claw number one. I'm switching dice. I just jo- wish that the Joe's gone all- to the spinning circle of death. I wish they were all ghoul fever and only the bite was paralyzed rather than the oh. other way around. Yeah. yeah. Sucks. Joe is just a white circle. Let's go to claw number one. Oh no! Claw. Shit. Claw number cool. one here. Close up on Joe. Oh, this, for is, this is tense. Oh no. <laughs> That's gonna be a twenty to hit. Oh. That hits. The big ass is back. Right. Claw number one does max damage, seven points of damage. Oh. And this is it, man. This is the fortitude save. Okay. I rolled a natural three. Oh, oh no. No. Oh, for no. a five. Oh, man. For a five. The S stands for sad. What were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing? I didn't want to leave three. my friends. You, you weren't. I was. Oh, this is a lady thought she was. You're paralyzed for four rounds. Oh. Four rounds? Okay. It still oh, has a claw matter. attack. Final claw. Honestly, the best thing that could happen right now is like a crit on this claw that knocks you unconscious. I don't know how many hit points you have left, but... Uh, all right, final claw. Uh, 18 to hit. Uh, that, yeah, that hits. Ugh. And you take five points of damage. I'm still up. Oh. No, no, no. (laughs) The next one takes a five foot step. Coup de grace. No, it's a full round action. That's, yeah, you can do it with a five foot step. Five foot step is the only thing you can take. During a full round action. During a full round action. That's what I was Uh, asking. I don't know. I get a fortitude save, right? I think you you should look up the text. Uh, you know what? This is, uh, it's fair. This is a big thing. Uh, you can full round with a five foot step. Sad times. Uh, here we go. This is brutal. 
I'm just reading the chat. Someone said, said, my pants are soaked with urine. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew is getting gabagooled. Boo. <laughs> oh, Boo. That's great. Automatic crit. This is going to set the DC for the damage. Uh, 2d6 plus 2. Oh, max. Oh, 7, 8, 9. 10 points of damage. That's a DC 20 fortitude save. Okay. Um, can, you, can you make it? Yes. I, I have a cap for you. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I've got no There's caps. I've got no caps, I got a right? cap. And then, that's true. You have a cap. My crit. Uh, I've got no caps. And then I'm doing the FOD today. And Cliff, shout out to Cliff, is like, Joe, did you know that you have not one, but two unused Strange Aeons caps? Oh. He's like, I'll send you uh, uh, time, whatever, time codes. Uh I'm just saying. He says I have two. I know that I got one in DC and that I spent that one. But otherwise, he says, did you further know you have the most bottle caps received in Strange Aeons at four? Interesting. I don't think you have two. I think Cliff's wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I told Cliff you were going to say that. Cliff, yeah. were you, you going to stand for that? Troy is telling you you're wrong on national Twitch Vision. You watching Cliff? National, National Twitch, Twitch Vision. Vision. National <laughs> Twitch Vision. <laughs> Welcome oh. to Twitch Vision. Twitch Vision. Uh, but Grant does have a cap if he'd like to uh, supply it to his uh, fellow uh, Century Rider. Only if Wait, we... so I'm sorry. So you, who doesn't take any notes on these shows or has no memory of what happens? <laughs> Wait, you are... want me to take notes on your bottle caps? <laughs> no, no I don't. I'm just saying. No, I don't do saying. that. So, so I don't have any. <laughs> Just no, to because be clear. you walked into this assuming you don't have any. Okay. I don't know this Cliff. Cliff could be your mom. <laughs> Started My a mom. Cliff account. Your mom is unfamiliar mom. with the battle cap economy. <laughs> <laughs> Not, uh, can you imagine your mom is like, you know what? I feel like I want to know a little bit about what my son does. And she learned all of the rules in Pathfinder, <laughs> started listening, and started keeping track of all of your bottle caps for you. That would be yeah. the best mom ever. The thing is, I remember you getting caps, but I know you spend them quickly. And so I feel like you would have kept better notes. Um, maybe Cliff drinks. He said full <laughs> notes here. He posted he's here. He's watching. Cliff is watching. Anyway. Grant, are, you reading, are you reading the Cliff notes? <laughs> oh. 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 Bottle cap for me. Bottle cap for me. And you can't have it, Matthew. You can't have it. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> um I will grant the bottle cap, but Matthew, no. That even though oh my God. slightly grainy, you're gonna go full screen. Full screen on okay. Matthew. Matthew Cam one, go. Alright, Matthew, let me ask you this question. Do you wanna roll both at the same time <laughs> or one at a time? Well, I only have one D20 in my hand right now, so it's going to have to be that that option. <laughs> oh, man, we are at Matthew Cam. All right, let's go with that option. What is your fortitude bonus? Your fort bone, as they say uh, uh, on the it, streets. My fort bone is a plus two. So you need an 18 or higher. Can someone make that a drop, by the way? That's a request from Grant. My fort bone is plus two. I'd love to have that as my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a new text message alert. I would just love Matthew to say that. <laughs> Grant, I could so just record lady. it for you. If I you really wanted that badly. We're friends. I can do this for you. Thank you. Two chances to roll an 18, 19, or Twanzoni. With my sweet, sweet multicolored Norse Foundry Witch's Brew die. Ooh. Witch's oh. Brew! Oh, shades of Gorms. Little Miles Davis. <laughs> All right. Oh, Fortitude no. Fortitude save. I'm sick. I'm sick to my stomach. Natural five. Oh, God. Oh, no. There it, it is. Goes to oh, I bite, hate the five. I hate bite right five. at your neck. Bottle cap. Roll. You, you owe a thank you letter to Missouri if this works. Crack die. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. God damn it. I can't. These dice trays, they crack. <laughs> they crack right. a lot. They crack a lot. Oh, my God. I can't take it. Sixteen. Oh. The ghouls had been circling the room, getting in their attacks in, laid out a paralysis on Aldo. 
genius tactical move to block the doorway right at the beginning of the fight. It'll go down in history. It's one of the best tactical moves in the history of Pathfinder. Atticus, whoosh, fucking Shades of Iceman, throws up a wall to save Aldo's life. They'll always ask, where was O'Lady's wall? Where was O'Lady's wall? One guy comes in, bite. This is two rounds they've been trying to bite. Claw, claw, nothing. The guy lands that first claw, paralyzes O'Lady. Next guy steps up and just sees your exposed neck right under your scarf, goes after it, latches on, and pulls out your larynx. And O'Lady, Cartha Malasord, falls to the ground and dies. And yet again, Matthew Capitacasa loses a PC. This is the time? Really this why? Rub that in right now? That's for the people watching the marathon, not for you. You could, I didn't mean for you to hear that. Thanks. This fight is not over. Aldo's still paralyzed. He got one of your companions down. This isn't the green loser. This is Mrs. O'Lady. Halster, you're up. Holy jeez. Oh, man. That is just sickening. And he's watching it all invisible. It's like he's seeing it in the third person. Additional third person. Some sort of, like, extra removal from the scenario. And it's surreal and awful. Um, he will step up to the southernmost ghoul. Um knowing that there's no chance of attempting to revive Miss O'Lady. He's not sure she's dead. He hasn't seen it yet, but he knows she went down. We'll swing out at the Southern Ghoul. 18 on the die. That is a 25 to hit. That is a hit. That is going to be nine points of piercing damage. The one that landed the killing blow to Mrs. O'Lady had two hit points left. Oh, and wow. Now it's dead. You got your revenge against Miss Malasord's murderer. I'm so depressed. God damn it. Top of the next round. Not out of the woods. Atticus Grimm. The doorway Atticus is... Just steps into the room. Open. Face dropping. It's just... <laughs> Slow mo, awesome. yelling with his fingerless gloves because he's a <laughs> shitty rat, a shitty urban rat. Uh, and he casts magic missile on the nice, the one uh, that, right, right across from Halster. Magic missile. Oh, God. They'll say, "Where was O'Lady's wall?" They'll also say, "Where was O'Lady's missile?" Yeah, you could have done magic missile that last turn. <laughs> well, I didn't know that that one, a southern one took any damage. I, I, I just didn't see it. I think I thought you were going to full withdraw. If you full withdrew, you'd be perfectly alive. It didn't this make is any not sense. My fault. To, it didn't make any sense to me as Mrs. L.A. to full withdraw. Well, because that, those two were the ones that uh, Aldo hit with the bomb, so they took a lot of damage. <laughs> Do you remember how much damage she did? Oh my apparel? god, yeah, this is going to come chat. back on me. <laughs> Yeah. When, like, an easy full withdrawal, easy full withdrawal saves a coup de gras. Oh, so if your friend makes a mistake, if your friend makes a mistake, you just want them to die? What kind of what kind of messed up morality is that, O'Brien? You just Jesus gotta take Christ. better notes during the combat of uh, who gets hit and who doesn't. Uh, unbelievable. I'm so unbelievable. Pissed. So, magic missile? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, no, I'll, uh, I'm just gonna delay. Good luck, good luck, guys. 
It's like, see ya. We go check out that run of the south. It's uh, okay, Joe. No one will blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this. You're. Uh, this is ridiculous. No, I, mean, I won't. I don't accept it. I don't accept it. You <laughs> not you full accept? withdrawing is preposterous. It's not preposterous. It's preposterous. <laughs> it is. You know, it's absolutely preposterous. <laughs> Mrs. Olay's. She. Her goal was to save Aldo, and then she's and she has been able yeah, to dodge you say, all you these say, ghouls. Come after, me, come after me. Come after me, and you drop back ten feet, not five feet, and incur two attacks of opportunity. It was I. I would have to no, full withdraw. No, you withdraw. Waste the whole round. You attack zero. You you provoke zero because you full well, withdraw. I was also hoping to hurt the ghouls. Yeah, with what your telekinetic projectile? Get out 20, of here! Twenty-six <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> That's, that's, yeah. That is admittedly uh, less than your magic missile might have done, but uh, <laughs> I'm telling can we you, all I, just, I, can I, we don't all I don't accept responsibility. That Fuck a magic you. missile would have killed Mrs. O'Lady's Lady's murderer. I think we can all agree that a magic missile, for example, <laughs> would kill Mrs. O'Lady's Lady's murderer. I just rolled ten points of damage on that magic missile. <laughs> Max damage. Oh Max my. damage. Which, by the way, would have been wasted on that two hit point uh, ghoul. So. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the one in the back with 10? Yeah, and I don't like okay. your tone. <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking. I have, to, I have to keep track of hit points for my creatures. Oh, no, so the one right in the now. back is the one you hit for 10. I got it. He's still alive. Uh, Joe, I'm thinking of rolling up a hungry ghost monk. Can I, can I call you for some advice later on? <laughs> Just use his. <laughs> I swear to God. I up. swear to God. I don't accept it. I really don't accept I mean, it. It's listen, horse shit. I know brown it's liquor. It's shit. You brown? fucked up, not me. You fucked up. Brown liquor is a fighting liquor. I didn't know Shandoni's made you so ornery. <laughs> Shandoni. It's that lemon. It's that it's lemon. making him sour. sour. It does it. The acid. I just know the way people get with casters and character death. It's like, oh, it's your fault because you didn't fix everything. Like, no, <laughs> it's your fault. It's your fault. You your were magic. stupid. You wanted to caster. use your magic to save everyone. <laughs> I don't like to lift the veil too much, but I will tell you after that magic missile attack, that ghoul is down to two hit points, which is what that other ghoul had um, that killed Mrs. O'Lady. Do you want to move it all, Atticus? Uh, I already did. I had to move in to do it. Mrs. O'Lady, it would have been your turn. You're paralyzed, but your brain still worked. You saw this all happening. You saw it happen to Aldo moments ago. What is? What are those last thoughts in your head as that ghoul's teeth sinks into your flesh? You don't even feel it for crying out loud until it pulls out. I think... Uh, Mrs. O'Lady, whose memory has been, you know, coming back in dribs and drabs the past, what, year and a half of this adventure? Yeah. And she finally gets a glimpse of her grandson's face. Oh, no. And she remembers who he is. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> She's crumbling on the floor, just a hole where her neck once was. The small smile on her face. Perhaps because she knows that she saved the rest of you. Aldo has one round of paralysis left, and there's still one ghoul left in the fighter. I told you he has one hit point. He will do a full attack on Halster. Let me walk you through this. Let me walk you through this. He paralyzes Halster. And Atticus doesn't kill him in the next turn? What's to say Halster doesn't join Mrs. O in the boneyard? They could talk about the old days when they were in the dungeon together. Here comes the bite. 18 to hit? Miss. Claw number one. I'm due, man. I'm due. What gets you? Uh, no, a 19 doesn't. 20 or 21? You didn't declare which number would do other things earlier in the show. I'm not telling you nothing, it's fine, copper. fine. Well, the difference between me and the rest of you is I don't fudge my dice. Uh, crack die. I do crack them, though. Uh, 19. Nope. Miss. Miss. I've yet to roll I over can't a 19 how, against... how high you roll. This is insane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is insane. You roll I've, I've over rolled... 15 every attack. Yeah. yeah. Plus three to hit. I just rolled a 16. I keep rolling 16s. <laughs> he, missed a, he missed a bunch on Mrs. O'Lady. That's true. Yeah. That's true. yeah. 
That's what makes it even worse. You've rolled a lot of over 15s. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I never roll the green cat's eye because it's it's usually ice cold for me. Uh, but tonight it's been... Tonight been it's hot. It's a, mar- it's a marathon die. It's not a uh, just a, a two-hour sesh die. It's a marathon. And a miss on the third claw yes. with a 12. Let's keep moving along here. It is Halster's turn. Halster, you see old lady fall to the ground. How does that make you feel? It makes Halster feel terribly that he was unable to protect a companion that's been with him since he can remember because, I mean, he can't remember much of his life, but the moments he does, some of the best moments of levity were provided by her and her sagacious wisdom um, and he realizes in that moment that moment of brief levity thinking about the past that he has no time for such things and he slashes out with great fury at the remaining ghoul can I ask you a question yes I don't want to play what's going on in your character's head but tell me if he at all has this moment where he regrets being a divine spellcaster and wishes that he had maybe chosen a more arcane path so he'd have access to a spell like magic missile that yeah, could have no, saved her. I think that in Halster's mind, he saw that magic missile clearly could have been the answer to this whole conundrum we're in. And if he had had access to such a spell without any hesitation, he would have used it to save his friend. You'd be laughing with her through the rest of the adventure, but yep. unfortunately, you don't have access to Listen, that. Listen, uh, I don't exactly know what the past choices of my life that led me down this divine Skip. path, but it's what I'm stuck with, so here we go. Oh, out of the box. I'm sorry. I'm just so nervous just thinking I know, about I know, I know, I uh, know. <laughs> that is a, a 19 to hit. That is a hit. For eight points of damage killing blow and you are out of combat you all take a deep breath and soak in the scene here this is a lady just a pool of blood forming underneath her A lot of blood in the neck area. She collapses. She starts spinning wildly. Clearly, her, uh, she just defecated everywhere. It's getting to be <laughs> quite grim at this point. She just, oh, uh, still going. Really? You can't. You can't <laughs> <stop. laughs> uh, she just, you knew she was old, no. maybe a little incontinent, but just, no. oh, that's a shit. What did she eat today? That has to be it. That that has to be all of it. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) An old old woman just died. If only only she'd full withdrawn. (laughs) Oh, God. That has to be all of it. (laughs) It has to be. Oh, Oh, God. God. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, that got me. That got me because it's late. <laughs> it has to be all of it. Oh, it's jeepers. Uh, yeah, she's dead. What do you guys do? There's a... Uh, the remnants of a staircase dangling off the wall. You look like you could probably climb to what remains of the landing to get into the tower, but there's also a whole room here, and is one of your companions you've been with now let's be honest it's been five days a year and a half of game time but five days but when you battle together you form bonds you know who knows what your relationships are with your mothers with your grandmothers maybe she was a sort of spiritual successor to them in a way especially where you don't even know who you are what do you guys do? Aldo pulls himself up, shakes off the paralysis finally. He's sitting there watching this all happen, knowing that he could have saved could have saved her, her life. And he, like, 
stumbles over as he's shaking feeling back into his limbs he's like no 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 and he picks up her head and it's kind of like holding her lap as the blood is leaving her it's like no Oh, she shit. defecates again all over your knees. No, oh, no. no. Right, you know really? what? They thought it was it. all done. Forget it. I was gonna do an. I was gonna do an actual real emotional thing. I'm not gonna I do ruined it. No. it. <laughs> ruined just, it. It's part ruined of it. it. It's part of it. It, it was part of it, and I thought it was I, over. But it sorry, wasn't, I thought. So, I thought yeah. you were done. All right, let's go up the, t- the <laughs> stairs. The tower. Wait, can we? I would like the emotional thing. <laughs> I can't do it now. I had pretend a, I'm I, not here. I was literally sitting here preparing, emotionally preparing for this moment as an actor. <laughs> and you completely destroyed it. Right, I can't pretend, get it back. Just pretend I never said it. Pretend I That's never impossible. said it. Impossible. There was a pause there. I thought that pause was make a poop joke. <laughs> oh. That's on me. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to take a my bad on that one. <laughs> he cradles her, blood gushing out. No poop. What does he what does he say? Guys, don't even look at him. Poop free gush. Poop free gush. <laughs> Shut up. It's going well so far. I had the music going. Just, no, no, she's my friend. Oh no. I could have saved her. Oh, Mrs. O'Lady. Oh, I'm so sorry. And he just kind of gently holds her eyelids shut with his fingers. He's just kind of rocking her and, and crying a little bit. Halster silently walks up behind Aldo and uh, places his hand upon his shoulder, wordlessly, but like just squeezes gently to let him know someone else is there with him, sharing the moment, but not saying anything. Hmm. And from this scene, we fade out. As the three of you mourn the loss of Mrs. O'Lady, Cartha Malasord. She never wanted to be called that, though. It's always the Mrs. O'Lady to me. Slowly lights fade up on the Apostle and Orpiment's camp. You see robed figures wandering about some mad, some feigning madness. You see Dr. Ren Elborn playing his German-French doctor character to inspire the masses. Long live the opament! It's various camps set up throughout the bodies crucified on the wall with bags over their head looming over all of this the broken down walls to the courtyard and to the outside seeping yellow fog in kind of giving the whole area this sickly yellow glow not unlike my jaundiced eyes and throughout all of this we are kind of moving like a moving camera through this crowd of crazies and apostles and fake apostles and we see the body of someone with their back to us sharpening a weapon (laughs) on a whetstone clad in perhaps some sort of armor it's hard to tell but she looks up and to the left right at the moment Mrs. O'Lady dies. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. We did it one night. We did oh, it wow. one night in. One night, night ladies and gentlemen. One day for lots of here, guys. Continuous performance ever that we've what, ever uh, done. <laughs> what time can they tune in tomorrow, Troy? Great question, Grant. That's going to be 6 p.m. Eastern, only on twitch.tv slash theglasscanon. Be sure to keep spoilers to a minimum, but get all your friends watching. We didn't get to 2,000 tonight. Will we hit it tomorrow? Probably not. 
8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern. Tell your friends. 8 p.m. Eastern. Tell all your friends. Oh, is that the 2000 push? <laughs> yeah. All right, Fake we it. start at 6. After all the banter, we'll probably end up starting around 8. So, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, true. <laughs> a sad night, a wild night, but a fun night. Thank you guys for joining us, and Thanks. thank you for all your support uh, on the Patreon subscriptions. We'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow in a few hours. Yeah, yeah. see you in a few Bye. hours. Good night, everybody. Bye.